We are coming to you live from Greensboro, North Carolina. It is semi-final Saturday here. Four teams left. Two of them looking to punch their ticket. The ACC championship game. Baldwin. Blocked by Kane. And Alana Alyssa. Final score, NC State 70, Virginia Tech 55. looking for three and she nails it and a kiss to the crowd and Miami has done it for the second day in a row and the Canes will play for the ACC championship for the first time in school history Nothing But Net is presented by TIAA, and it is Championship Sunday here in Greensboro, North Carolina. The scene is set as NC State and Miami get ready to battle it out for the ACC title. Will it be a Wolfpack team that knows what it's like to win this trophy on the ACC's biggest stage? The regular season champs with a chance to win their third straight title. But after what we've seen this week, there is absolutely no one looking past the other team playing for the championship. This Hurricanes team came to Greensboro to put everybody on upset alert. Are they destined to win their first ACC championship tip-off? Just under 30 minutes away as you take a look at how we got here. Miami looking to be the first six seed or lower to win the ACC championship in tournament history. They've never won an ACC tournament title. Will it be today or will the Wolfpack get their third straight ACC title? As we welcome you into Greensboro Coliseum, what a great day it is and what an exciting game. I'm sure we have coming on deck. As we say hello, Hall of Famer, Head Coach Muffin McGraw, Kelly Gramlich, and Chelsea Gray. I'm Kelsey Riggs. Great to be with you guys. And the scene and the atmosphere here certainly starting to build as we get closer to tip off. We will count you down to that. But guys, if we would have talked about this at the beginning of the season, if we would have talked about this at the end of the season even, and said, hey, we're going to see NC State and Miami in the finals. Anybody have their hands up? No. <laughs> I Chelsea. said you're crazy. You're crazy. Yeah, I don't. I don't think I would pick that. I think a lot of people expected NC State to be here, but Miami, man, you got to hat, hats off to them and the, and how they played during this ACC tournament. Yeah, NC State, and Louisville, been the top two teams all year. Everybody expected that was going to be our final today. And that's not what we got because it's March. It's March Madness. And, you know, it's the very beginning of March. I think Miami has set the tone, not just for the women's game, but on the men's side, too. This has been mm -hmm. a magical run. I would say one of the most magical runs in ACC tournament history. And if they can cap it, I mean, as you said, Kels, no six seed or lower has ever won this thing, ever, even when this tournament only had eight teams back in the day. Well, something seems to be in the water at Curl Coral <laughs> Gables because they have things going right now. And you take a look at the chance to make the ACC championship. For Miami, it was just a 3.3 chance to get to this point, guys. Guess what? Put all your money on that 3% chance because they were able to do it. Let's take a look at how they got here, though. The Canes' late surge started in the regular season. They won six of five of their last six games, held their opponents to an ACC best 52 points per game, and they also knocked off 16th ranked Georgia Tech on the road. They earned themselves a first round bye as the seventh seed faced Duke in the second round and it was a close game where neither team led by more than nine points but the Hurricanes they were able to edge out the Blue Devils. They won 61 to 55. According to BPI, Miami entered the quarterfinals just a 13% chance to win. The Hurricanes were down 16 early in the fourth quarter. How about that rally though? 17-0 run in the last 430, and we cannot forget what Destiny Harden did there. And then Miami, they get the win over Louisville. What an outstanding performance from them, 57-54 to 54 the final. Here's their head coach on finishing strong.
we came into this tournament being sick of the almost. I mean, that's really what we've been talking about, like the almost, this, this much, this six inches, and they hit a three in your face. Carla takes that away from Mabry, and, they, and we win, almost. We've given up ORB uh, offensive rebounds, uh, threes against teams when we could have won the game, and we just grabbed the ball, almost. All these almost that we went through. And, um, you know, there was not going to be an almost today. There was not going to be one. We were going to win. I love that quote there from Katie Meyer about the almost and turning into tomorrow. There's a country song about the almost maybe's coach. I won't sing it to you. But when you hear her say that and you think about being in that locker room and the message that she's been preaching to her team, it seems like that has really resonated with them. And now they're almost on the verge of potentially winning their first ACC title. You know, nobody wants to hear, oh, you're so close. Oh, you, you know, you're, you're just one thing away. And really, to me, leadership is believing in your team after they fail. And boy, they have had somebody close games that they didn't come up with the win and now she's got them believing and that's the thing I respect about her so much she never stops believing that in in the hair in that press conference <laughs> a little bit of an Elvis look because she just got drenched in the locker room because this team really believes and I think this team has grown perhaps more than any other team in the ACC this season got off to a slower start they had Destiny Harden who was injured Mikea Gray was coming back from that injury but they have played some teams tough they almost beat Maryland in the ACC Big Ten Challenge Challenge. They played Indiana tough. We've seen the potential, Chels, but they just really weren't healthy. And now they're playing with a ridiculous amount of confidence. It's crazy what happens when you get a chance to have a full roster and everybody <laughs> healthy and everybody's believing in what this team can do. And they're making a great a historical one, a run, as you said, and they're believing in their head coach. I think that's the, they're so connected as a group. You really feel that. Yeah. You saw that in the post-game celebration on the court. You feel that in their huddles. And so it, it's no surprise to me. I think since they've since the second half of that Duke game, I think they really started believing. We're just like, okay, let's let's make a run at this thing, and you really can feel that. They won eight out of their last nine games. NC State has won its last nine. Two teams that are definitely playing great basketball right now. But when you look at the program comparison between these two, it's definitely different for being on the big stage since Miami joined the ACC in 2004-2005. NC State has won twice as many ACC tournament games as Miami has and Miami as mentioned has not won a conference championship with the ACC they did win when they were in the Big East so kind of a tale of two tapes when you look at what has happened in the past with these for NC State coach I mean you won four straight titles when you were with Notre Dame is there pressure for them coming into this game because everybody expects you're the regular season champs you've done it the last two times you're supposed to win this game yeah and pressure is all about those expectations and I think most of us put pressure on ourselves more so than anybody else does. But the team should be relaxed because there's nothing like experience. We've been here before. We know what this is going to be like. We're expecting a tough game. I think the team will be ready for West. There's a, there's a little nerves. But once that ball goes up, everybody relaxes. I think nationally there's a little bit of pressure because last year NC State underachieved. They won this tournament. They beat Louisville. They went to the Sweet 16 and they lost. And we all thought this was a team that could make the Final Four. This year, I very much think they can make the Final Four. I don't think you want to set the tone heading into the NCAA tournament that you're, you're not going to even win your own league and beat Miami. So I see some national pressure. I think NC State definitely needs to handle business if they want to feel good about making a deep run. Yeah, I definitely think there's outside pressure on them, but I think in their locker room, because of their experience, like when the sh lights get a little bit brighter, they're able to execute. And I think when you have a point guard like Reyna Perez, you have down low presence with Elisa Kunain, when you're stepping on the floor with that, like, I'm going to have confidence in that. And it's quarter by quarter. And like Coach said, once the ball goes up, mm -hmm. you forget about everything else. And you just focus on the game plan. I think that's where their head is at. If NC State does get it done, it will be their third straight. They would be the fifth team to get the three-peat. But they will have to get through a Miami team that would have had Chelsea picking up her red phone all week long if we had it out here. <laughs> Calling upset alert. Diamond Johnson averaging nearly 11 points per game. Second leading scorer on NC State. What will she? be able to do we're talking guard play and keys to the game on the other side of this break as we are just about 23 minutes away from tip off here in Greensboro here, here. Diamond Johnson is the sixth player of the year it's not even close Diamond Johnson has changed this game Johnson is so fast Johnson will fire you bet mid-range game and that's a bucket Sweet Hesitation and the dagger. Diamond is 
shining for NC State. <laughs> is presented by TIAA, dedicated to equality in retirement. Great to be with you live from Greensboro Coliseum, where we are just about 20 minutes away from tip-off. The ACC championship game between NC State and Miami. And how about the star player for the Wolfpack, Chels, Alisa Kunain. If you're her right now, minutes away, what, what's going through her head? Let me see. I'm probably just calm, cool, and collected a little bit. Getting some shots up, and I'm like, I need a 3 P right here and get up out of here. Get out of NC State. <laughs> <laughs> but I know she's excited for this moment. Um, I think she's full, she's embracing her role as a leader on that team and being efficient. I just hope she comes into this game confident like she's been all season. Well, she should be because the numbers that she has been putting up are impressive. You guys, 50% field goal percentage, 40% from three, and 80% free throw percentage. Kelly, just the sixth center in the last 20 seasons to shoot 50, 40, and 80. I know you were pumped up when you saw that Ooh. stat. That's insane. That's absolutely insane. She's the only center doing that right now in today's game this season, and only the second center in Power 5 competition to do that in the last 20 years. Her free throw percentage and her three-point touch separates her from other centers. You know, there's no question. When you shoot threes, you're going to put your percentage down a little bit, but she still manages to get she over 50%. Them, she does make them <laughs> at a pretty good clip, and she gets to the line a lot. To have your center shooting 80%, I think that's something you expect your guards to do, but I don't know about the center. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I agree. When you're able to go to the line so much and be able to still shoot 80%, I remember we were in a season for WNBA, and Atlanta Deladon was shooting 50, 40, 90. <laughs> and I was like, okay, we can't foul her. Yeah, you can. <laughs> we got to do something else. We can't foul this woman and put her at the line so I think it's very impressive numbers when you talk about that 32 career double doubles for her as well so she has been on a roll throughout her entire time at NC State not just her though the guards for NC State also really key to what they're able to do you know, there's nothing like a point guard. Most important position on the floor. Look at these smiles over here. Look at these <laughs> smiles. That's how you get the center of the ball, right, Chels? A absolutely. It's the most important position, Coach. It is. And, you know, she's got to set up her teammates. She's got to find the mismatches. She's got to make the offense go. And you're going to see here in the pick and roll what she does. kunane has got to come out and set a good screen. She's got to read the angle, make sure she's going to hit the defender. But it's the point guard's job to rub her man off that screen. I always tell my players, head for the free throw line. We want to get that free throw jumper and that was just perfect execution here you're going to see diamond johnson coming off the ball screen what she's going to do is she's going to use that screen so tight she comes right off she's going to turn the corner and make that center hesitate guard her for a second which allows hobby to get that one second roll to the basket really important timing here's the one four set really hard to help off this because you got shooters on the wings perez comes off you see kunane is open because both players step out she could keep it and make the pass, but she does the smart thing. She throws it over to Jones for the high-low. Easy basket inside. Kunain is all alone for the kiss off the glass. Just a great execution. I expect to see that pick and roll a lot today. Well, and they have been good at it in ACC play. Actually, first in the conference in all of these statistical categories. Not just here, though, in the ACC. When you look at what they've been able to do, top 25 in Division One, according to Synergy, um, scoring on 40% of their pick and roll plays this season. The pick and roll, they have mastered it at NC State, and it's because Kunane and her versatility, she can pick and pop, she can dive to the bucket, and these guards, to your point, Coach, they know exactly what they want to do and exactly what they're looking for in these sets, whether it's Perez, whether it's Diamond Johnson, Jakia Brown-Turner, or if you're using Jada Boyd as the picker, you've got a lot more versatility with her, too. I think it's so hard to guard when you're going into a pick and roll situation and that post player can pop out and shoot it or, or can, can roll to the back. And then when you have a guard that goes downhill, that post has to help. You yeah. either have a lob over the top or kick back to the three-point line. And when Kunane's standing at the top of the key, you're either going to have to bring a rotation. Something's going to happen. So pick and roll is the hardest thing to guard in basketball. So how will they guard it? One of the things that we've had fun talking about with Miami is just the grittiness of this team defensively and what we've seen from them so far this season. And especially here in the ACC tournament, especially in their last nine games, they've only let that one team this season shoot above 50 percent that team was NC State earlier this year they've won eight of their last games in all eight wins they've held their opponents
minutes to under 60 points. So this Miami defense ready to take on this NC State offense. And Kelly, what is it that they do that makes them so effective? Well, they've been the best defense in the ACC in February. I think a lot of it has to do with their cohesiveness on the defensive end, how hard they play, and how smart these guards are. And, and one thing they do really well is they can stay in front of you. They don't need help. These guards rarely need help, as you see Kelsey Marshall there. In this situation where a post player needs help, another post comes over and helps. Kelsey Marshall's right there, helps side. They force a Emily Inksler turnover. They're constantly communicating with each other. This play may be the most impressive here of this group of plays. And these posts are very versatile. You see Naomi Mbondu. She's highlighted right there. She's going to help there on the screen. Then she's going to get pinned down by Olivia Cochran. But in less than a second, she gets around her and gets her hand on that pass. These post players are athletic, and they can move laterally really well. So I think that will be a challenge for Elisa Kunain. And this third play, y'all, this is just effort. Kelsey Marshall's guarding the ball. She is going to basically dive in the passing lane. That pass is normally open. That pass looked open to Dara Mabry, but Kelsey Marshall with the effort and the hustle and knowing her scout, knowing what Notre Dame wanted to do there, she gets that ball and forces a turnover. This Miami team, they're forcing 18 plus turnovers per game over the last nine. NC State is the best team in the ACC at taking care of the basketball. So what is going to give today? So many things when it comes to defense, Kelly, but what stuck out there at the end that you talked about and we've, I feel like, seen the last few days is the effort, Chelsea. And when you see Kelsey, Kelsey Marshall making a play like that and giving that kind of effort, it's not just her. That's, that, I mean, permeates through the entire team. That's championship plays. You know, when you talk about championships, you're going to have executing plays. You're going to come down and you, okay, did you do the right coverage? But I think it's those intangible moments that make the difference. The 50-50 balls, the offensive rebounding. Do you get deflections are you on point with the scouting report so all those little things and I think that's what those clips really highlighted it's the little things getting deflections around the post players getting deflections as a guard so I think that's going to be important coming to this game that's what I'm anxious to see how are they going to guard Kunin she went eight for ten for them in the first game yeah. they have to have a different plan they contain the ball really well but now how are they going to scramble out of the double team that's going to be the answer and it's interesting because these two played back on January 9th Miami had a long COVID pause before Christmas they were a very different team back on January 9th. So I'm not sure we can take too much from that game. I don't think NC State is saying, oh, we beat him in January. Yeah. We're feeling good. I, I don't think that's the case. Do we worry about fatigue at all for this Miami team late in the game? <laughs> These two saying yes, <laughs> yes. and Chelsea <laughs> emphatically over there saying no, Chelsea. So you tell me why. Because they're, they were <laughs> picked to be here. They're excited to be here and going to play extremely hard. I just feel like they're fired up for this game. Now, if they get down 12 to 15 points, that's a, that you got to uh -huh. go into an extra gear. But in the beginning, may, I mean, maybe they're calling my bluff and, and not going <laughs> to do that. But I feel like they're going to be ready to play, ready to be out there, diving on loose balls. I'm pumped already. I don't know why I'm sitting up here. And I should be in a uniform or something. I'm thinking about this from a shooter's perspective. Okay. Uh, of course. All right, look, your legs, four games in four days, you have to be, every single time you shoot the ball, you have to think legs first. You have to get your legs into every single shot. I talked with Miami's trainer. They're feeling pretty good, Chelsea. They're not feeling like they're out of this by any means with four games in four days. They're working with some tart cherry juice, which, yeah, which I know you have every morning. And <laughs> yeah. you can either dilute this with water or you can just shoot it. And that's what they've been doing. It helps cherry with inflammation. Juice. Tart okay. cherry juice. Okay. It's good it's for inflammation. It's quite tart. Quite yeah. tart. Good for inflammation. You know what? So that's what Miami's trying. I'm saying don't settle for threes too early. Let's feel like if you get your legs into it, let's try to work the ball and get some easier shots. Maybe they were back there doing some push-ups to get their arms ready too. <laughs> Maybe. Maybe. You got to rely on something else. Maybe that's <laughs> The tar cherry juice. A close game here now. We mentioned off the top of the show, NC's, uh, NC State has been here plenty. Miami, the first time that they've ever played for an ACC championship. If they win, a seven seed has never done that. No lower than a, a five seed has ever done it. What does it say, Coach, about the league and the ACC as a whole that a team, Miami, that is playing so well late in the season is now sitting here as a seven seed playing for the ACC title? I think we're the best conference in the country right now. Say it From again. top to bottom. I mean, with <laughs> your chest, Number Coach. one seed. Mm -hmm. And then we have eight, nine, ten people looking at getting in the tournament. They still have, have that hope. I think this is a great league. We killed the Big Ten in the Big Ten Ooh. Challenge. I mean, we, we are a conference that is really Throw out the numbers. <laughs> Come on. Let them know. Selection Put those committee. on the big to you. If anybody's watching this game, what we did in that Coach challenge. Coach her goal. She is ready to go. I agree. This is, this is an ACC league that is just full of 
the Dynamite teams. You know, even some teams that could potentially be NCAA teams might not make it. And yeah. so when you look at it as a whole, it's, it's a great, it's a great league. What separates this league is the depth, the middle. There are very few leagues where your seven seed can beat a number one national seed, and that's what we've seen here. Here's what NC State has um, going for them in addition to everything that they have going this season. This crowd, as things yes, start yes. to fill up here at Greensboro Coliseum, will Miami be able to handle the crowd and the scene here, the home of the ACC tournament in Greensboro, North Carolina? But you guys, some things are just bigger than basketball. Not all always just about the impact on the court with Greensboro known for a whole lot more. At the heart of the Atlantic Coast Conference, Greensboro, North Carolina is a city of historical significance like Selma, Montgomery, and Birmingham, Little Rock, Atlanta, and Washington, D.C., Greensboro stands as one of the landmark settings of the Civil Rights Movement. On February 1st, 1960, four black students from North Carolina a and State University, David Richmond, Franklin McCain, Joseph McNeil, and Azell Blair Jr. sat down at a whites-only lunch counter at the local Woolworths. They sat there all day, peacefully, even after they were asked to leave, even after the police were called. They sat there until closing time and were never served. The next day, they returned, joined by over a dozen more students. In Greensboro, North Carolina, students launched a movement that electrified the nation, the sit-ins. By the end of the week, Thousands filled Greensboro, both for and against segregation. By the end of the month, college students across the South had begun sit-in protests. Finally, at the end of July 1960, Greensboro businesses agreed to serve black and white patrons side by side, all because of the Greensboro Four. Nothing But Net is presented by TIAA, dedicated to equality in retirement. Welcome back out live to Greensboro Coliseum. The lights are down. We are getting ready for tip-off between NC State and Miami. The emotions starting to run high, Coach, because we are just minutes away from finding out who will be our next ACC tournament champion. What's the one thing you're looking for in today's game? I think it's Kunane. She's played so well during this tournament. I think they rely on her. She kind of puts everybody at ease when she starts the game off well. For me, I'm looking at Miami. They made nine threes last time they played NC State. If they're able to knock down some threes and bring them out the paint and be able to drive the, drive the paint and get layups, it's going to be a good game. And everybody will be drinking cherry juice if that happens. <laughs> <laughs> Only one more thing to do. It is time to make our picks. So, Coach, is it going to be NC State for the third straight time or Miami for the first time ever? I've gone against Katie Meyer and the Hurricanes all season, and it's helped them. So I'm going to go NC State. <laughs> I see the reverse psychology you did there. I'm going to go with NC State. I wanted to go Miami. Why go didn't against, you, Chelsea? Why the didn't green. you? But I think they're going to pull it out. But I'm, I'm with you, Coach. Maybe it's the reverse. Yes. Miami has been so fun all tournament long. They have come up with upset after upset. This game coming your way on ESPN. It will be Kelly Grimlick who left us on the sidelines along with Debbie Antonelli and Beth Moens. We will see you back on ACC Network Extra and the app afterwards. It's a team sport. Some stars rise. To name for three. Yeah. Yeah. Leaders lead. That's for the win. It's over. Harden wins it. Taking over when the moment demands. She nails it. And a kiss to the crowd. Oh, the 
ACC Championship. Welcome to ESPN's Champ Week, presented by Principal Financial Group. The first of our five championship games for spots in the NCAA tournament. And we begin at the Greensboro Coliseum with the Woo! ACC on ESPN. NC State looking for a three-peat. Miami trying to become the lowest seed to ever win this tournament and win it for the first time in hurricane history. This is how they advanced and of note Miami trying to become the first team ever to knock out the top three seeds en route to the championship. As we welcome you inside the Greensboro Coliseum, a sea of red today for the Wolfpack, not too far from home, as we welcome you courtside, Beth Mowens and Debbie Antonelli. What a star-studded day we've got lined up with championships beginning here at the ACC, the SEC, the Big Ten, the A-10, and the Pac-12. And it all starts with the All-American Elisa Kunain for NC State. Beth, she's been the best player on the best team all season long. All she's done is deliver on both ends of the floor. She she can defend her position inside. She's very good at getting their break started with her rebounding and her block shots. She can pick and pop at 6'5". They're going to bring a double. She knows how to facilitate out of that. She can score in transition. She's durable. She runs ahead of the ball. This is going to be an exciting big day for Elisa Kunain and NC State. She was the tournament's MVP last year when they won it for the second time in a row. And for Miami, it has been quite the Cinderella story as they keep pulling off upsets en route to their first finals appearance. Not many have made a run through the tournament like Miami has here in Greensboro. First it's Duke, then it's the upset over the number two seed and the number four team in the country. 1.7 on the clock, Destiny Harden with the game winner. And then it's yesterday, down go the Irish, Kelsey Marshall with her three-point shooting ability. It's not one player, it's a connected group that believes, and that's why they're here. And now let's send a court side with Kelly Gremlin. Beth, you talked about the unprecedented nature of this Miami run. According to ESPN's BPI, they had a 3.3% chance to make it to the final. That's because this is their fourth game in four days. I talked with their trainer, Silver Harris. She said the key to recovery for Miami is cherry tart juice. She uses it with the track team. It decreases inflammation and will help with recovery. I'll be sending up to your booth at halftime, Beth and Debbie, some of that cherry tart juice for you. We'll take it. Yeah. <laughs> what is this, five days in a row for you, Debbie, Colin Hoops, here in Greensboro and over in Durham? And we are underway on Championship Sunday on the ESPN Networks. Miami, a team on the bubble, not just a couple of days ago. Now they may be fighting for an eight or nine seed in the NCAA tournament. And for NC State, solid on the number one line. The big question is, are they the overall number two seed, or is Stanford the overall number two seed? Could be significant in terms of where the teams are headed for the regional round. Can't wait to get into that conversation as the game wears on. Committee has Stanford at number two in their last reveal. The NCAA net has North Carolina State as the number two team behind South Carolina. Kunain, offensive rebound, won't go. Kayla Jones fights for another one. Third chance for State. Make it a fourth time, and a foul. Well, it starts with a double and a dig and a skip, and then an offensive rebounding barrage by NC State. Really being aggressive to start the game. Looking to crash three different NC State players with an offensive rebound in that series. Pendande commits the foul. Going to be critical for Miami to at least be competitive on the glass and to force some turnovers today. Not an easy task against the best team in the league at protecting the basketball. <laughs> Terrific free throw shooter for a big girl. How about Elisa Kunain, the only center in America, shooting 50%. 40% from downtown and 90% from the free throw line. She's an incredible weapon in their four out one in. She can play the one in or she can play on the perimeter with guard like skills. Excuse me, 80% from the free throw line. 
Here is Williams on the drive, gets into the lane. Destiny Harden, offensive rebound, up and in. She of the 27-point outburst, a career high in their quarterfinal win when she scored the final 15 points of the game. Miami will push. Marshall right into the belly of Cunane for two. A problem for NC State yesterday was keeping teams in front off the bounce. Virginia Tech did a nice job of attacking inside out, getting to the free throw line. NC State's perimeter defense needs to be better if they're gonna win. They can't keep putting pressure on Elisa Cunane to block shots on the back row. Jones, five on the shot clock. Jakia Brown-Turner on the skip, airs it. Usually a very good three-point shooting team. They have been subpar so far here in Greensboro. Well, look, one team's playing with house money, and the other one's got a little more pressure to start the game. And when you looked at Miami's team, they were loose. Their coaching staff was laughing. They were smiling. They were jumping up and down in warm-ups. I think tempo is going to be interesting. Does Miami just go for it, get it, and run? Because their calling card the last three days has been their defense. They've held all three opponents under 60 points. NC State would love to push tempo. Yeah, I think that's the key right there. You've got to get into their legs, especially in the second half. And you have to move the ball, though. The other thing NC State's got to do is move the ball. There's Wes Moore, the ACC Coach of the Year, again this season for the third time. Ended a drought, winning the ACC regular season championship this year for the first time since 1990. And Miami's playing behind, and they're going to rely on help from the perimeter. And you want to turn Kunane into a passer. It's a very good job scheming against Elisa Kunane. Aldi Tabi hands it off to Kelsey, Kelsey Marshall, their leading scorer, who had 18 in the semifinal win over the Fighting Irish yesterday. I talked to Kelsey Marshall before the game. She said, I feel good. I had one ice bath, and she referenced that tart cherry drink that Kelly was talking about. Rita Perez around and out. One and done on that trip, as NC State has started out 0 for 6 from the floor. Trail, Jaldi Tabdi. Jones has it. There's Kai Crutchfield, one of four different Wolfpack women that can shoot the three. And there's another one, Kayla Jones. Kayla Jones is one of the best hybrid fours in the country. I call her a hybrid because she's not just a stretch who can shoot the three. She's capable of making decisions on the top of the floor. Carla Aryavets, a big job for her running the point today. And a blocking foul will be called underneath the bucket on Brown Turner. She may have been in the restricted yeah, that, area. This play starts outside the restricted, or the lower defensive box, and maybe her feet were in the cylinder. If her heel is over the vertical plane of the line, that counts as being in the restricted area. By Forsberg, Joe Vasily, Billy Smith in the striped shirts for us today. Congratulations to this veteran crew for calling the ACC championship. Marshall, the grad student from Davie, Florida, gets the bucket. This Katie Myers club, they are coming in hot. They've won eight of their last nine. Very similar story to what we're seeing with Kentucky in the SEC right now, Debbie, as the Cats have reached the SEC final, coming up next against Carolina. Well, you're going to chance to see Ryan Howard, an All-American, and one of the top scorers in the country. Taking on Leah Boston, one of the front runners for National Player of the Year honors. And the best player on that best team right now, heading into the postseason. Jones kicks it out, Brown Turner. As that defense collapses inside, a foul on the drive. Anjal de Tabdi. That's her first. When NC State moves the ball, Beth gets sides, two or three sides. They're much better offensively. You didn't like their movement yesterday. I didn't. Did I, I thought they dribbled, dribbled too much. Yep. You know, dribble too much, stay in one spot, allows the defense to load up. Katie Meyer is one of the best at scheming on the defensive end. So you've got to keep the ball moving so that you can 
try to crack that code on the defensive end. They haven't seen each other in a while. Their regular season meeting was back in early January. NC State, a winner by 12. You know what, and they were plus 10 on the glass, and they made more threes than NC State did in that game down in Coral Gables. And NC State is the only team to shoot better than 50% on the Miami defense this year. Kelsey Marshall has the last seven points here for the Hurricane offense. Jaleah Williams trying to use the Mbandu screen. Jaquia Brown Dorner doing a good job of defending penetration. Shot clock winding down. Marshall's got a jack. Shot clock violation. Nine seven. The seven seed with the early lead. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Principal. Helping you plan, protect, invest, and retire. Now the new tradition of uh, advancing your sticker on the big board to that championship game. NC State looking for the three-peat. Miami looking for their very first ACC crown in their very first trip to the finals. Their fourth game in four days. They've already bounced the two seed, Louisville, the three seed, Notre Dame and trying to become the first team in the 40-year history of this tournament to knock out all three of the top seeds to win it. Marina Perez and Diamond Johnson, now the two point guards together in the backcourt. And Perez assisted by Johnson. And NC State moves in front. I like it for Westmore. Go a little bit smaller, try to change the tempo a little bit with your team. Put your two point guards on the floor together. They do play together well. Perez got into some foul trouble yesterday. Johnson played more minutes. Ty Gray got to respect her three point range. The kick out of Bondu for three, that won't go. Nobody but Kayla Jones around the rebound. Underway on a big championship Sunday. ACC, SEC, A-10, Big Ten, Pac-12 all coming your way this afternoon and this evening as Johnson hits the runner. Good mouse in the house opportunity, but because Kayla Jones was posting up so hard, it created a driving lane. Off the takeaway, Perez spinning. Aired it. You can sense the uh, energy level of NC State much better today than yesterday against Virginia Tech. They look a lot more locked in than yesterday's performance. And they won, and I didn't think they played well. But they played well enough to win. And remember, Virginia Tech and Kenny Brooks was down two starters to injury. Well, for the Atlantic Coast Conference, it looks like eight teams will get into the NCAA tournament. Boston College has an argument to be the ninth. And uh, five teams right now in the ACC in the top 20 net. So you've got a shot at three or four teams hosting. Virginia Tech may have earned a top 16 seed with their push into the semifinals this weekend. Well, no league has five in the top 20 nets, and no league has two number one seeds potentially. So that should pull the rest of the league up. So you can make a really strong case for Boston College based on some of those metrics that the committee will like to look at. We don't know all the criteria that the committee looks at. We don't even know what's in the net, but this is the net. NC State is number two, and they've been number two for a while. Of course, South Carolina is the overall number one. Louisville fans will be rooting against Baylor this weekend coming up in the Big 12 tournament. That might be the only discussion for that last number one seed, Louisville and Baylor, if Baylor sweeps the regular season and the, uh, the Big 12 tournament. Could be, however, the ACC with its net rankings and the number of teams they have in the net. Yes. It'd be an interesting conversation 
And then there's the S curve with the ones and the twos. Right, that brings in a, a lot of conversation about who the ones are, where they go, who the twos are and where they go. We know geography is a part of the equation, unfortunately, because I think our game deserves better. We should be past geography in our game now. Perez, she's hunting her shot a little bit more here in the first half. Well, they're really sagging in on Kumain, so Perez and Diamond Johnson have come in deciding that they're going to look to seek some shots. It's a 7-0 run right now for NC State. And it's been about four minutes since the last bucket, and that will end the drought. Lola Pagande, the junior from Spain. I mean, I love the aggressive post up, showing hands and numbers to the ball, putting Kunane in the net. Perez fouled out top by Gray, her first. This is a great high-low look. You've got to have better pressure on the top of the floor. And Kunane almost picked up a cheap one, but Pendande did a great job doing the work before the ball comes inside. Under two minutes to go in the first quarter of this ACC championship game. Miami showing a little 1-3-1. Giving the pack a new look, Kunane spins into the lane. Help comes to defend. Now I saw Katie Meyer this morning, and I got to go watch a little film. And guess what she was watching? That 1-3-1 one, three, one from three years ago, Beth. Three years ago when they ran it against NC State. She is putting in the work, her and her staff, and they've got Kunane to start 0 for 3 from the floor. Just two points so far in the quarter. They haven't run that defense all season. She doesn't remember any possessions of it, which she told me. Gray with the walk. Hey, Champ Week rolls on today. We got four more women's title games for automatic entry into the NCAA tournament. Coming up next, Ryan Howard in Kentucky, Aaliyah Boston in South Carolina. Over on the deuce, it's UMass and Dayton for the A-10 championship. And still to come, Caitlin Clark in Iowa in the Big Ten final. Haley Jones and defending national champion Stanford in the Pac-12 final as Hobby hits. Debbie, it's a day of heavy favorites and underdogs in all these championship games. And superstar players. Yes. I mean, Aaliyah Boston, South Carolina, Ryan Howard, Kentucky, then Caitlin Clark, all must-see TV. Indiana is a five seed in the Big Ten final. Utah, first Pac-12 championship as a six seed. Miami right here as a seven seed, trying to become the lowest seed ever to win it. I love the energy, the push, the running the floor, staying wide. One shot here for NC State to take it down. Three shot, three second differential back. Oh, Johnson walked with it, and a big takeaway here for Miami, and now they will have the final look of the quarter. That was a tremendous job by Mikea Gray. They look like they're going to ice, and then she jumps to the strong hand of Diamond Johnson to cause that turnover. Katie Meyer, offense, defensive sub. She'll get a couple of shooters on here as Harden and Williams return. I'm calling Destiny Harden's number right here. Has she made a buzzer beater this week? Uh, <laughs> 1.7 <laughs> against Louisville. Yeah, she's made one. Here she is on the inbound. Harden number three in green. Let's see if she gets a look. Rivets are trying to get her a touch, it looks like. Uh, they will have to jack and a foul. We'll get Pendande to the free throw line with under a second to go. Not the way they drew it up, but They'll get a look from 15 it. feet here I mean, a couple of times. She's going to the free throw line on this one. Oh, yeah, she used the ball to create separation, but then she's going to go to the line for two shots. 68%. The 95% uh, house of red didn't like it. <laughs> Maybe 98%. About a, what, an hour and a half from, uh, from Rob oh, not from even campus? Not no. even. Maybe. For the Wolfpack hour, faithful to get here. Depends on who's driving. Depends on how much lead in your foot. Abby rebounds, so they get one of two, and it's a two-point game through the first quarter to decide the Atlanta Coast Conference Championship.
Today's Need to Know is brought to you by Principal Financial Group. Miami looking for their first ever ACC championship and a better seed for the NCAA tournament. NC State looking for a three-peat and perhaps moving up to the overall number two seed. It's going to be an interesting conversation. NC State and Stanford for that overall number two behind South Carolina. Let's check in with Kelly Gramlich. Thanks, guys. Down here in the Miami huddle, really trying to keep Kelsey Marshall warm. During that timeout, she was riding the bike. Now she's back on the floor for Miami. One other big takeaway, Katie Meyer said, we are now treating Camille Hobby like she's Kunane. They're going to respect her three-point shot because she's already knocked one down, guys. Yeah, so apparently an issue with Marshall. She did play seven minutes in that first quarter. When, as they have done this entire tournament, Debbie, they have really set the tone with a strong defensive first 10 minutes. They held NC State to just 28% shooting. Camille Hobby having an impact on this game early. There's another turnover by Miami on a miscommunication offensively. You know, Camille Hobby, her freshman year, she didn't play much. And she toughed it out. She got better. She would be the first player to practice, the last to leave. And you get rewarded in a moment like this when you stick it out and you keep working. That's what she did. She gets a chance here with Kunain uh, taking advantage of the uh, quarter break to get a little more rest. Jada Boyd, who had a big semifinal, spins and hits. She had 16 against Vatek yesterday. We don't have a flopping rule in our game, and the officials did a good job of ignoring that. Otherwise, that would have been a classic flop. And that's a classic slip. Harden with the lay-in. Destiny's second bucket. She's got four. Great read. Good lift of the weak side to take away the help. Boyd off the cross That's short. not a good shot. You have Hobby on a post up, and you try to create something off the bounce, and Miami gets to transition the other way. There is Marshall back on the floor. Trying to dial up a three. And swooping in to snag. That was Jada Boyd. Another quick shot that's for not a, NC State. That's not a good shot. That's two in a row. All you're doing is allowing Miami to run, rebound and run before your defense gets organized. Pendande working the boards. You got to move the ball. You should not be taking a contested shot. Here comes that 1-3-1 one, oh, yeah. one again. Oh, Perez almost dragged the foot there. Hobby. Calling for it, doesn't see the defender coming, and Williams grabs it right away from her. Good hustle. Jaleel Williams, the freshman for Katie Myers, has been outstanding all tournament. Hobby doesn't protect the ball. Hey, you got to have, what's the th three things with football, you know? When you can, when you, what Four is it? Points of contact? Yeah, her yeah. dad, I'm sure, taught her that. He coaches football. Got to hold that high, right? Bengals. As guards, we love when a big yeah. holds the ball low. Harden tries to step by with the left and scoops it up and in, and the Hurricanes have tied it up. What a tough competitor Destiny Harden has been. She has made every big play. She has created momentum. She stopped momentum. And here's what we didn't see coming, Debbie. They own the paint right now. 10-2 to two advantage in the paint for the team without Elisa Kudain and Camille Hobby. Miami is like, hey, we are here. We're not going anywhere easy, right? This is a tough piece of footwork right here by Harden to stretch. That's what you call excellent pivot work. They, in the post. they are working off the bounce and getting it inside. Brown Turner. Strip loose, Kunane fouled. Look at Destiny Harden grads, Pendande, who has obviously, that's how invested this Miami team is. I mean, they have been emotionally locked in. Well, they, they came all, here as a 7 seed, nobody believed. I mean, yeah, they were, they were supposed to beat Duke. 
They were supposed to beat Louisville. They all called the travel on that one, and they, they didn't get agreement from the officials on it. And Pendande has picked up her second personal foul. Shaldi Topney returns. Yeah, the two big upsets, and now a shot at the regular season champs for Miami. Kinane to the line. Now three for three today. Coming up tonight on ESPN and the app, it's an NBA Sunday double dipper. The Raptors and the Cavs, they're right next to uh, each other in the East Conference standings, uh, followed by the Knicks and the Clippers. Coverage starts with NBA countdown, 7 Eastern, 4 Pacific. Foul off the ball. Jones trying to displace Mbandu. That'll be the first on Caleb. I mean, when you look at Miami as a seven seed and you think about their length, their veteran guard play, it's how good the league's been all year, right? Maybe a little bit overshadowed by two number ones, but certainly Miami, with the way they've played in February into March, been outstanding. They're going to be a tough knockout in the NCAA tournament. Terrific box out for the pack. And it's all about matchups. Whether you're an eight or a nine, it doesn't matter. New this year, there will be a first four for the women. The field expanding to 68 teams. And the selection sun, uh, show moves back to Sunday this year. So it's a week from tonight when we will see the field of 68. Foul called on Bandu. Good in pointing to the top to get the pass from the top of the floor because she had great position. Good communication. I love it when a post player says, pass it up there, I've got the seal. Her first basket of the day. Today now with six points, three rebounds. Watch the point. Look, pass it up there. Better angle. I'll keep the seal and the contact. Good work, footwork inside to finish. Projected to be a top 10 pick for the WNBA draft this spring. And a big chance to move up high on that list with a Top notch postseason. Williams for three gets it for Miami. <laughs> Jelena Williams is not a three point shooter. She actually has only made four in her entire season. <laughs> and she's made two here to the tournament. All about timing. Makes it a one point game as we approach the midway point of this second quarter. Jones will have to heave. Good defense for the Canes. Oh, Crutchfield got a piece of that. Johnson with the steal and the dish, and Brown Turner missed the layup. Chance for Miami to get a big swing and the lead. Kunane with the block. How about Miami's play keeping this crowd out of it? Good defensive play oh, by Kayla Jones. Jones. Yeah. Jones got the swat, and we've got a timeout. 4.42 to go. A tight one in the ACC final. Coming up at halftime, Coach Andy Landers, the Hall of Fame, Rebecca Lobo, Charlie Cream, Monica McNutt. We've got so much to get into in our current game, you guys. You've got a team that's looking for their third consecutive ACC tournament title or one that's looking for their first from since 2004 to 2005. And joining the ACC, B, what has stood, stood out? Well, no surprise. It's been a defensive battle so far, and the field goal percentages for both teams have reflected that. <laughs> what she said. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're dead on. I mean, both these teams have scouted each other very well. They're taking their strengths away, having a hard time scoring. It's championship day right here on ESPN. Stick around. Enjoy the rest of this ball game. Well, looking forward to all that conversation. Thank you so much, Monica. We have seen chaos already since the committee's final reveal 
on Monday night. Look at this. The teams highlighted eight of the top 16 have lost games this week. So there will still be a whole lot of movement. Big one we're watching here today, of course, is where does NC State land if they win this game? Are they the overall three? Do they pass Stanford, depending on what the Cardinal do later today? Where does Louisville end up after they lost in the quarters here? Well, NC State and Stanford have common opponents. They both beat Indiana and Maryland, and they both lost to Dawn Staley's South yep. Carolina team. But South Stanford has a worse loss in South Florida than NC State's two losses to Georgia and to South Carolina and Notre Dame. So three losses for the Wolfpack, but I mentioned South Carolina at the top. So I think the strength of the ACC, if NC State can hold on here and win with a deeper league with five teams in the net, top 20, NC State should be ahead of Stanford and be the overall number two, number one. Pac-12 has three teams in the top 20 net. Of course, Stanford was a runaway winner this year. They looked so good going undefeated through the Pac-12. And then that's where geography comes in. It certainly looks like South Carolina will actually be coming here if they win their first and second round games to the Greensboro Regional as the overall number one seed. And they should. That's not the, the issue. The issue is Wichita and Bridgeport, because Stanford will be in Spokane. We like to call it the Yukon Undrum because they have been so good for so long and have earned the right to play close to home year in and year out. They've been to the Final Four 13 years in a row. And this year, of course, they had the big injury to Paige Beckers that affected their record. So what does the committee think of the eye test? Because Connecticut right. looks awfully good since she's returned. With a true S-curve, do they stay in Bridgeport as maybe the overall five or six? Or will they have to go on the road for a first time in a long time if they in earn, the regions? If they earn it, it's great. Yep. But if you skew, skew the rest of the top eight because of that, that is unfair. And that's where I think our game has gone past that. True S-curve. Yes. Geography, yep. Of course, Miami can mess with all of that if the Canes can continue their run. They've won three games in three days, and they're working on a fourth. Here's another thing, too. I mean, I looked at Bridgeport. There's not many tickets left. They have bought the tickets up there. So now you decide. If you put UConn there, they've got fans there. It's going to be great. If you don't put UConn there, who, what, how are the other teams going to get tickets? And Bandu with the steal. Marshall North Kumane with the rebound. It would certainly look like Stanford, uh, it's a given, they would be in the Spokane Regional. And then what are you going to do with Baylor? Perhaps Iowa? Would they be the top two seeds in Wichita? That place would be rocking. Kunane. And one. This is terrific execution by NC State. Pick and roll on the strong side. Clear out the weak side help. Late arriving. Kunane with a tough and one opportunity. She has scored the last eight points for NC State and a chance to tag on another. Last year, the ACC's tournament MVP, when she averaged 23 points, nine rebounds, shot better than 60%. She's on that pace again and Debbie she's sixth all time in scoring and some of the legends of the game that have suited up over the years for K Al coach teams that are on that list Gina Beasley at number one Linda Page Andrea Stinson Chastity Melvin from state's final four team in 98 she has put her name up there on a very special list in Raleigh after all these years, Gina Beasley is still the all-time yep. leading scorer and rebounder in NC State history. She belongs in the Hall of Fame. Perez around it now. Here's Marshall. Kinane knocked it loose. Miami will reset. Going to be an offensive foul on a moving screen. Is that on Bandu? Yes, it is. Number two. Okay, this is a fight right here. Like Miami is not letting anybody push them around. I mean, they are solid defensively. 
They are forcing NC State, for the most part, to take jump shots. It's a two-possession game at their tempo. Buck and a half to play here in the first half. Miami back to the 1-3-1. One, Perez going to get an open look. She'll put it on the deck. Kunane, offensive rebound. Jones. Brown Turner crashes. Shot gets blocked. All kinds of contact on both sides. Ball still loose, and finally, Kayla Jones lays it up and in. Wow. All right, now. Not good for Miami if it's that physical without their depth. Good for NC State. Crutchfield almost got it. Five on the shot clock. Marshall drops it off. Kudane bothers. And it's a shot clock violation. Well, you can credit the sixth man for this one. What a great job the Wolfpack fans did in helping create that kind of environment in here where Miami couldn't communicate. So last shot here of the half for NC State. The well, last possession. They've held Miami scoreless for the last four minutes. Now trying to put a capper on it. Kunane back to Perez. Got to go to Kunane with this matchup on the floor. Perez will try for three and hit it. NC State ends the half on a 10-0 run. And a nine-point lead at the half. Let's get it over to Kelly. Here with Katie Meyer. Coach, you played a lot of 1-3-1 in that first half. What was the mindset using that zone in this game? Yeah, we didn't get to play as much of it as we wanted because, we, you know, it's a made shot call. So uh, we struggle a little bit offensively. And then, um, you know, we're, we're in foul trouble. So um, we're trying to protect. 20 minutes left for a possibility of winning an ACC championship. What will you tell your team at half? Well, they need to calm down. You know, they're they're getting really upset and it, edgy. And I, we we had a two, a three clean threes and a pull up for Kelsey. They didn't fall. And if those fall, it's a tie game right now. We just got to move forward. Thank you, Coach. Appreciate it. 10-0 state run to close out the half. 20 minutes to the ACC championship. Let's get you back to the studio. Thank you, Beth. Welcome into the studio. Man, what a trio I have surrounding me. Coach Andy Landers, the Hall of Famer, Rebecca Lovell, Charlie Cream. Oh, we could get into the bracket thing. We're going to go there, Charlie. <laughs> this game, you guys, NC State is 23-0 and when leading at the half, Coach. But Miami has put up quite the fight. Yeah, they, I think Miami's been terrific, especially on the defensive end of the floor. In their last game, North Carolina State scored 30 points in the paint. Kunane was 8 of 10 from the floor. That's not happening in this game. They only have 8 points in the paint because of plays like this. Every time the ball comes in, look at the collapse from the weak side. Going to come in again. Watch the defenders on the outside come back in. You're not getting it inside. Going to have to go outside. Going to make it tough to score in the paint. Even out of a 1-3-1, they doubled down with the weak wing. Everything's been tough in the paint. Expect that to continue in the second half. They've been successful with it. And as a result, NC State's had to find other ways that they've been able to score. And one of the ways that you can score when so much attention defensively is being put in the paint is by getting it out to your three-point shooters. And in particular, against that man, they were able to go in and out and find some things from the perimeter. Here in your secondary, the defense isn't set up. A perfect place to step into a three. Later on in that first quarter, 
moving the ball around the perimeter. Again, attention inside on the post player. And then later on in the half, instead of just trying to do direct entry into Elisa Kunane, you move her on the perimeter, set the pick and roll, get her on the move where it's a little bit more difficult for her to finish. It still was a tough finish, but she got to the and one. NC State trying to figure out offensively and successful doing so how to, how to counter that tough D. We heard uh, Katie Meyer tell R. Kelly Gramlich that they have to settle down a little bit. Miami had five turnovers over the last four minutes or so of that ballgame. Now, Charlie, let's talk about this. Because if Miami is able to pull this off in the second half, it will be the first time that they have won an ACC ch tournament championship since they joined in 2004-2005. And it would mean a little bit of mayhem in the brackets. Well, it would push them up to an eight seed. Uh, right now I have them as a nine. Miami and Kentucky, who we're going to see later in the SEC, these two very upwardly mobile teams, they've gone from outside the bracket to very much right in the middle of it. And Miami, think about that, is an, is an eight or a nine. The, they're playing a team right now that's going to be a one in NC State. Well, that's where they'd be set up to play in the NCAA tournament. Does, a, does another one seed in the second round mm. want to play a team like Miami that mm. defends the way they do, the way Coach and Rebecca just, hey, just hey, detailed? I don't think so. Charlie, Monica wants mayhem. I Give want mayhem. mayhem. <laughs> I want mayhem. All right. Second half of a terrific championship ball game is on the way. Alyssa Kunain leads all store, scores with 11 points so far. Enjoy the second half. Welcome back to ESPN's Champ Week, presented by Principal Financial Group, our first of five championship games for automatic bids to the NCAA tournament. Of course, of significance to Miami and NC State is that championship trophy. NC State has the last two. Miami is trying to secure their very first ever. Beth Mowens along with Debbie Antonelli. It was a finish with a flourish for the Wolfpack to that first half. Nice alliteration there, Beth. Uh, yes, NC State on a roll. They played much better in the last few minutes of the second half. Let's see if they can string it together here to start this, the second half, the first half on that. Elisa Kunane back to back. Scoring of, of Perez from three and then the offensive rebounds where NC State's had nine boards and scored six points off those nine boards. And then to end the half, Reina Perez with the third triple for NC State in the first half. Perez had uh, two of those three, six points. Cunane, 11.7 boards. Three Miami post players had two fouls each. Kelsey Marshall and Destiny Harden there. Starting backcourt combined for 15. Neither side shot it particularly well. The only difference was those last four minutes when NC State went on a 10-0 run. Big here now for Miami to stay close, playing their fourth game in four days and put some pressure on NC State in that fourth quarter. Well, you want to put game pressure on the top seed, that's for sure. And we'll see how much we'll see that 1-3-1 one, one defense that Coach Meyer threw out in the first half. I actually thought she might have saved that for the second half. NC State, I'm sure, talked about it and made some adjustments at halftime. Perez, the feed to Kunane. They get Elisa a quick touch, and she scores. With the left. Nice half hook, something she spent a lot of time in the offseason working on, being able to finish with her left and her right. She's got 13 to lead all scorers. And the block inside. That's the second for Kayla Jones today. Marshall off the bounce. She and Harden were their go-tos in that first half. And Kelsey with her first bucket of this third quarter. She's got 11. I mean, I don't see fatigue in Miami at any point playing their fourth game in four days. But where you'll start to see it show up is, do they get in a stance? Do they sprint through their actions and their detail? Do they sprint the screen? Do they sprint the floor? Those things are when you start to see fatigue. Pendande, good job to keep it away from the scrappy Perez, and she knocks it down. She's got seven. Miami coming with some full court pressure, looking to trap. And Reina Perez is being face guarded right now by Williams. Jones fouled by Marshall. Let's check in with Kelly. Hey guys, two main points of emphasis from the NC State staff coming out of halftime. First of all, keep attacking that zone, swing the ball, test the gaps, and kick it if it isn't there, and be sure to knock down those threes with confidence. 
The second thing, Westmore is very focused on these first five minutes. They want to be able to maintain that momentum that they built going into the half and keep this crowd very much into this game, guys. That critical juncture right here. They try and push through. You know, NC State knows what it feels like. Here comes some, some change by Wes Moore. He's looking to extend his pressure. Typically, they don't look to extend their pressure very often, even after made free throws. I think it's all a part of the rhythm of the game to me. You know, NC State's a very offensive-minded team, and they have to be in offensive rhythm. And sometimes your defense can get you there. The shot, Pendande, that ball did not touch the rim, and they will not get up another shot. And a violation on the Canes. And you see the universal sign for be cool, everybody. Stay calm from Katie Meyer to her team right now. Down double digits. Brown Turner. I mean, no. how many layups has NC State missed in this championship a game? Lot. I thought she was fouled. Foul. Yes. Good call. That was a foul. See, the problem for Wes Moore's team has been off the bounce defensively and sometimes dribbling too much offensively. When you miss a shot at the rim, the other team can sprint. You already got numbers if you push. Area Vets is 77% free throw shooter. It's the first day. Hey, next Sunday night, we're just a week away from Selection Sunday. But the NCAA Women's Selection Special presented by Capital One gets underway at 8 Eastern on ESPN. Bonus hour of coverage at 9 o'clock over on ESPN2. We will see the full bracket of 68 teams this year as we add the first four to the women's game. And an and one for Kudane on the drive and finish. See that? Skill transfers to the next level. It's full court pressure. You got three on two. You got the six five in the middle. Good take. That was like a half a euro step right there, Beth. That's six five with a little euro. Mm -hmm. NC State now has matched its biggest lead of the day. Kunane with 16. Had the double-double yesterday with 20 points and 13 rebounds. You know, we were talking, I thought she was going to need to have 25 today for NC State to put this one away. Let's see if they go back to her and keep trying to get her established on the baseline. Good hustle by Jakia Brown-Turner. Again, playing in transition. That's the way you stop the basketball in transition, what Destiny Harden did right there. Again, Kunane pointing. And she hit the deck hard, and Kunane stays down after the play. Interesting, too, they immediately blew the whistle with a live ball, Debbie. Miami had a five on four going the other way. Is it the ankle? Foot landed on the defender right there, the left ankle. And Kunane will come out with 6.40 to go. Hobby checks in to take her place and a timeout Miami. And Katie Meyer immediately coming over to the official saying, hey, we had a five on four right there with a quick whistle. Back in a moment. Our star-studded championship Sunday rolls on next with Aaliyah Boston leading South Carolina in the SEC championship game. Then it's Caitlin Clark and Iowa against Indiana for the Big Ten title. And the defending national champs with the Pac-12 Player of the Year, Hallie Jones, taking on upstart Utah in our finale coming up later tonight. The star of this one, 
with an ankle injury, Debbie, and that was just a moment ago. Elisa Cunane, who just left the game, went back to the North Carolina State locker room to get checked on, out at the 640 mark with an 11-point lead. As soon as we can get a report on Cunane, we will let you know, but Camille Hobby has played well. Hobby Six. has two, two for two from the floor, Beth. She's got four points in five minutes from the first half. 6-10 to go here in the third, and there is a touch for Hobby inside. Missed another layup for NC State, and it will go to the Canes. I mean, why aren't players using their left hand on the left side of the basket when you have the defender right there? She used a dribble to power up. Where's the fundamentals, Beth? Yeah. Fundamentals. Left side, left hand. What's at stake for Miami? They are trying to become the lowest seed to ever win this ACC tournament. No one has ever beaten the one, two, and three seeds to take home the trophy. They've taken down two and three, working on number one this afternoon. Really good defense by Jakia Brown-Turner. Moving her feet, high hands. I thought NC State had a really good defensive possession there. They defended the flare screen early. Defended penetration. The kick out to Hobby. Air mailed it. And out of bounds to the Canes. Good play by Marshall to knock it off the defender. So Miami has a real opportunity here without Elisa Cunane and Job Detaldi on the inside, who also has some pick and pop opportunities. Or certainly has that in her skill set for Katie Meyer. Should mention congratulations to the Lutzenkirchen family. Abby, Katie's niece, got married yesterday. I'm sure the Lutzenkirchens and all the Myers are all watching today intently, getting ready to celebrate another opportunity. Should they celebrate the wedding yesterday and maybe a championship today? Marshall off the miss. Under five minutes to go and a scrap inside. Hobby will be called for the foul. That will be her first. 40 to 29, NC State on top. We're just a week away from Selection Sunday night, 8 o'clock Eastern on ESPN. We will see the full bracket. According to the Selection Committee's last reveal, South Carolina, Stanford, NC State, and Louisville are on that top line as the one seeds. NC State showing some zone off the timeout. Taken away by the pack, they continue to play without Elisa Cunane, an apparent ankle injury. She left to go back to the locker room, has not returned to the bench at the 640 mark of this third quarter is when it happened. Since then, however, Miami has, been not, has not been able to chip away at the lead. Hobby tries to wrap it, missed another layup. And then draws the foul. Oh, that's just great work by Hobby to draw that foul because she just had the ball over her head and just tried to draw the foul by throwing it at the hoop. I also think because of the versatility of Wes Moore's offense, you can put Jada Boyd into the block and have Hobby play in the high post area also. Boyd uses her quickness inside. Well, Monday night on ACC Network, the final two episodes of the tournament, A History of ACC Men's Basketball, Episode 9 at 9 o'clock, followed by Episode 10. You can always play catch-up on your ESPN app. Miami 0 for 3 with two turnovers in their five possessions since Kunain departed. And they have not scored a single point. Gray quick to pull the trigger on the three without a pass. A different way to get into that action for Katie Meyer. She's dumping out the playbook on NC State. Hobby. 
Rebound, Jal de Tabdi. Here comes Marshall. They have not had uh, chances to run here in this second half. Gray steps around Crutchfield and then missed it. Canes will keep. Katie Meyer having to go a little bit deeper into her bench. Jasmine Roberts, the freshman, getting some minutes. Marshall, short. Kept alive by Crutchfield. Four games in four days for Miami. The two sides have combined for two points in the last four and a half minutes. On the run, the pass picked off by Boyd and a foul. <laughs> NC State just one for their last eight from the floor, Beth. And Miami 0 for their last eight, Debbie. I like Jada Boyd right here. I think I'd run something for her. Miami going back to the 1-3-1. Boyd number five in white. Perez will pull up and hit. Get in the gap and shoot it with confidence. That's exactly what Wes Moore told Kelly going to the, coming back to the half. Bob inside, Perez comes to help out underneath. Good read. You got a ball fake that. Area Vets to inbound. Final two minutes of this third quarter. Area Vets still cannot find the bottom of the net. Taken away by NC State. Step up screen by Javi. Wide open inside. Beautifully executed. In transition. Quick hitter for the Wolfpack. A 9-0 NC State run. Camille Hobby's gonna do a great job in transition, setting this step up screen, and then Perez is gonna read it well. This is a very good play by NC State in transition. No weak side help because a quick hitter, you're not organized on the weak side, and NC State does such a good job of running to the three-point line in transition on the weak side. NC State has Scored six straight since Kunane left the game. Miami has not scored in the last six minutes and have missed their last nine shots. And perhaps the fourth game in four days is catching up. They did have the huge fourth quarter comeback to shock Louisville a couple of days ago. And Bondu blocked and a foul. And Bondu going aggressive to the glass. Mm. And look at the crowd on their feet. Kunane returning to the bench. She will actually make a stop at the trainer's table behind the bench. Let's send it over to Kelly, who's standing right next to her. Elisa Kinane has entered the building. As you heard, the loud cheer from NC State Faithful. She is now wearing an ankle brace on her left ankle. Just had the ankles taped for the game, so she's added that brace. She's getting on the bike to try to get back into game shape to get back in and gave a thumbs up to the crowd, guys. So we'll see what happens with Elisa Kinane. Of course, the score could have a big factor in that if she needs to return or not. 
Absolutely, it's not worth it, right? If, if you don't need to put her back in. And you'd have 10 or so days to rest up and rehab it, get ready for the NCAA tournament where NC State will be hosting first and second round action on Kayao Court at Reynolds Coliseum. Remember last year, Kayla Jones got hurt in the NCAA tournament in the first round, and it really affected NC State's ability to advance. I'm sure that went through the minds of several Wolfpack fans. Perez, double digits now with 10. Perez has been known to hit a few big shots in this building. Commits the foul there on Marshall. She had the big bucket late in last year's ACC championship game. Half a minute to go here in the third. Marshall gets into the lane and gets it up and in. Kelsey Marshall is going to be on the all-tournament team. She has played so well here in leading Miami. Final seconds of the quarter. Johnson, step back, three, good! The top seed takes over in the third. Ten minutes away from a three-peat here in Greensboro. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Principal, helping you plan, protect, invest, and retire. A look at the recent ACC tournament champs, Louisville and Notre Dame, and the last two in a row to NC State. And they have the big advantage heading into the fourth quarter, trying to make it a three-peat. As the hardware is in the house, Debbie. That's a beautiful looking trophy. And Wes Moore has taken that back on the bus to Raleigh twice in the last two years. They would join Duke, who has five straight. North Carolina and Notre Dame each had four straight championships. And now NC State trying to get a third in a row. Back to the zone. Diamond Johnson. Oh, and she hit the three to end the third. Hits another to start the fourth. And they have not skipped a beat since Kunane went out with the ankle injury. Second half looks like a number one seed. Marshall swatted so. by Boyd. I think so. Got a lot of great games on the schedule tonight. All day. Great women's championship caliber play. Stars, great teams. And Kunane has uh, looked uh, every bit the All-American today for NC State. You got Leah Boston on deck with South Carolina, followed by Caitlin Clark at Iowa. What are, what are their four major player of the year awards, right? Yeah. Well, Wade Naismith. Wooden, AP, AP, U.S. basketball writers. There's a bunch of them. I think the consensus is they're, they're, they'll probably each win a couple. Well, the Clark nice. and, and Boston. Yeah, maybe Melissa Smith in there. I think uh, Aaliyah Boston is probably the Naismith Defensive Player of the Year. Yeah. As well as the candidate for Player of the Year. Smith was the Wade Trophy winner last year. Boston is that big presence inside, dominant at both ends of the floor. Everything runs through her. And Clark is just that electrifying perimeter player. Got the ball in her hands, making all the decisions with Steph Curry-type range on her three ball. Yeah, and no one's led the nation in scoring and yeah. assists in the women's game. And it's only happened once on the men's side. That was Trey Young playing now for the Atlanta Hawks. This looks like uh, a big day for the dominant one seed. There are uh, dominance versus dogs, the underdogs coming up the rest of the day. Shout out to the Kentucky Wildcats, the Indiana Hoosiers, the Utah Utes. A couple of those teams were on life support really 
Not even sure they'd be in the postseason. Now they are tearing it up and playing for their conference championships later today. Julia Williams, good looking freshman for Katie Meyer. That beautiful pull up jump shot to the elbow. Miami on the bubble 72 hours ago, now looking like maybe a 7-8-9 seed, according to Charlie Cream. I, I think Katie Meyer and her staff and her team were winners regardless of the outcome of this one, just because of the way they played since they've been here in the upsets over Louisville and Notre Dame. I'll be called for the walk. And, you know, for Katie Meyer, Beth, she's been in the league longer than anyone else, 17 years as the head coach there. And, all-time winningest coach in the history of Miami. And as a player at Duke or in this situation as a head coach, never had a chance to play in the player coach in the championship game. And you could see it all over her at the beginning of the game, how excited she and her staff were. We talked about all the teams in that selection committee reveal that have already lost this week, eight of the top 16. So there could be uh, quite a bit of movement up and down the seed lines. Heading into Selection Sunday as Miami draws the foul inside. Second on Camille Hobby. And how about this? Cunane's going to come back in. West want to make sure he's getting that one seat. <laughs> Injuries are a factor, a part of the criteria. Yeah. It's great to see her back. Good work by the training staff. We did not get a chance to see Elizabeth Kitley or Kayla King yesterday, both out with injuries for Virginia Tech, but uh, hope all is well. What was that left foot, right foot breathe she had written on her sneaker there. Hope all is well with them, and they'll be good to go for the NCAA tournament. Virginia Tech's got a chance to host. They're in the host bubble. Left foot, right foot breathe. Mm -hmm. That's Pat Summit. It's also one foot in front of the other, the old Christmas, uh, in the old Christmas movie. Kunane double comes, she pitches it back out. Jones swings it to Jackson in the corner. Miami will push, need buckets and need a bunch of them in a hurry. That was a tough. Destiny Harden playing some tough defense there. Destiny, six points today, had that huge five minutes at the close of the Louisville game. And of course, that immediately moves her up the scouting report for opponents. The points have been a little harder to come by since. She misses there on the three. Grenade. Oh, Harden got a piece of that. Marshall for three. Got it. What fight in Miami. Well, they've erased a seven-point deficit already once in this tournament. West Moore getting on the officials. Look at Destiny Harden, that's all ball. And then Marshall runs the lane wide for a th triple. They've scored the last six points. Perez pulls up, way off. Signs of life for Miami. They have held state scoreless for the last four minutes. Timeout. Katie Meyer will take the timeout with them. 4.45 to go in the ACC final.
Thank you, Monica. Looking forward to that one coming up next from the SEC championship game. Let's check in with Kelly right now. Coach Meyer's main message in this Miami huddle, guys, was, look, we have more points in the paint than we do. We can score in the lane, and that was their point of emphasis. She was relaxed. She looked at them, and she said, we've done this before. Ended the huddle with a smile, guys. Yeah, let's see if it's Destiny Harden time again. Jakia Brown-Turner on that assignment defensively. Off the bounce, Marshall. Got it. Full court pressure. This is what you want if you're Miami. Put some game pressure on NC State. Miami's Kelsey Marshall doing a nice job down the lane line. Off that screen and roll in the middle third. Miami on an 8-0 run. Perez, back out to Johnson. Diamond off the bounce, and a foul. Slice, stagger, attack the strong side. Good action on the weak side to keep the defense busy. It allows that lane line to open up. State 11 of 12 at the line so far today. Champ Week rolls on with more women's championship action for you. SEC's on deck with Kentucky and top-seeded South Carolina. Over on the deuce, it's UMass and the top seed Dayton for the A-10 final. Still to come, come uh, Caitlin Clark and Iowa taking on Indiana in the Big Ten championship. And defending national champion Stanford against the upstart Utes looking for a Pac-12 crown. Six Eastern on ESPN2. All that action also available on your app. Championship Sunday here on the ESPN Networks. A week away from the selection show next Sunday night. Johnson looking that's for Cunane. That's a really bad angle. I mean, Cunane wasn't shaped up to the ball. Maybe one more dribble. The dribble handoff, Diamond's trying to get it inside on that little cross screen. Door open for Miami. A little game slippage by the Wolfpack here late. Got to tighten up the details at this point in the game. Williams three, knew it was off as soon as she shot it and then commits the foul. Miami with just two team fouls. Only one timeout remaining for Miami, four for NC State. Perez, they got a three on two. Johnson fouled. Numbers for NC State. See, that's rim body ball right there. Diamond Johnson doing a great job of keeping her body between the rim and the Defender from the defender in the ball. Johnson hits on the first. That'll get her into double figures. Ten points for Diamond. Reina Perez with ten. Kunane with sixteen. Kayla Jones with ten rebounds. Kelsey Marshall leading the way for Miami with eighteen. She's the only one in double figures. Marshall. Johnson staying in front of her and she gets it up over the top. Good defense, better offense. You want to stay off the sidelines now. You want to try to keep the ball in the middle third if you're NC State. You don't know when Miami might bring the trap. Kunin gets a touch. And a trip to the free throw line. If it's on Pendande, that's her fifth. And it is. 
Well, the luxury of your 6-5 in a late game situation is she's an excellent free throw shooter. So when it's a late game and you teams are pressing, you can use her as a press reliever because she's going to step to the line and be confident. And that would probably leave everybody <laughs> blaming me for that. Gets the second. She's not 100% on that ankle, but she will be by the time the NCAA yeah. tournament rolls around since she appeared back in the game. Miami loves this pistol action, and they're so good at scoring off it in transition. Marshall to the line. It's the first on Kinane. Wes Moore gets Raina Perez, Diamond Johnson, and Kai Crutchfield. Keeps them on the floor to handle against what is anticipated pressure by Miami. Marshall now with 21 points. Got to be prepared to box out here. Gets them both, and here comes the full court. Handled by NC State, and Perez gets it out of the corner. Johnson quick to pull the three. Yeah. Not a wise decision because it's a long rebound to an easy two. 11 point game. There's the ball handling aspect of the three guards, and there's also the decision-making aspect for the three guards. Well, all the Crutchfield, guards. they'll try again for three, no good. And here comes Miami again. Pull up, won't go. Oh, big miss there for the Canes. And now the breakout for Perez. And she'll make them pay. Well, to your point, Beth, all the guards, positive ratio. Decision making not necessarily always in the stat sheet. Uriavets, now they're fighting the clock. Air ball rebounded by Diamond Johnson. And the Wolfpack fans are ready to make some noise now. Perez, three. Williams with one minute to go, misses the layup. What a wild finish. On their feet in Greensboro. There are minor fans following the game. ACC Network Extra on the ESPN app. Nothing but net coverage for you with Kelsey Muffet, Chelsea, and Kelly. As the Wolfpack women close in on a three-peat at the ACC Tournament. Down here with ACC champion Wes Moore. Coach, back to back to back. How does it feel? That's called a three-peat, Kelly. All right? No. Uh, again, Miami, what can you say, man? 
They make it so hard on you to score the ball, to run what you want to run. They kept mixing up the defenses. Proud of the way our kids hung in there. You know, had an unbelievable uh, sixth person, if you want to call it that, here today. Uh, a lot of energy in the building, and definitely uh, we played off of that. Coach, Elisa was so good, tweaked that ankle a little bit, but it, it felt like she wasn't going to be kept out of the game. Is that what happened there? Yeah, she tweaked it, but the trainer said it wasn't bad. Uh, they said they felt comfortable retaping it, and they were going back out there a little bit. So, you know, we lean on her a lot. So we wanted to get her back out there some just to make sure she's okay going into the next round. Kayla, Raina, and Kai, they came back for their fifth year to do this. What does it mean for your fifth year seniors? Yeah, you know, I've ridden their coattails for four years now, five in some cases. Uh, unbelievable. And that's, again, they wanted to rewrite the final chapter. Now, winning three of these in a row, that's a legacy. Winning the regular season, amazing. But, again, they came back for this next thing. And uh, we're excited about the NCAA tournament and – and uh, this whole league is so good. I think we probably deserve nine or ten teams in it, and hopefully we'll get them in. You heard the man. That's a three-peat, Coach. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Coach. 60 to 47, the final score. NC State, a winner over Miami. Led once again by Elisa Kunane. 17 points, eight rebounds today. What a terrific effort on the inside. Playing in a crowd most of the game because of the defensive scheming by Miami. Kinane has the ability to score with her back to the basket. She can get out in space and put it on the deck. She also has three-point range, but her ability left and right around the rim with her counters makes her really tough to deal with on the offensive end. Kelly? We're down here with Elisa Kunane. Elisa, you hear that wolf pack. How does it feel to go back to back to back? It's just amazing, you know, um, to have Wolf Pack Nation here and to do it three times, like back to back to back. I'm just so proud of this group and so proud of us for doing this again. How are we feeling? It felt like you weren't going to be kept out of that basketball game. Yeah, uh, I'm pretty emotional right now. Um, I usually don't get emotional, but I'm just proud of us for battling this out uh, and finishing this game. You are from nearby Summerfield, North Carolina. You've won three ACC tournament titles here. What does it mean to be from North Carolina and do this for the pack? It's huge, you know, being like 15, 20 minutes away from home. I know a ton of people came out tonight to support me and the team. So to do it for my hometown or neighbor hometown, uh, it's just amazing. Elisa. You're one of the best to ever do it in the ACC. Thanks for letting us watch you for four years. Thank you. I appreciate you. Back to you guys. Thank you, Kelly. NC State kicks off our championship Sunday with the ACC championship game. Still more to come all day long on the ESPN Networks. Up next, the SEC championship. And for now, let's get you back to the studio.
championship game. Congratulations to Katie Meyer and her staff. That's my privilege to be on stage right now with the commissioner, Mr. Jim Phillips, who's going to present the ACC 2022 championship trophy. supposed to be here. The journey wasn't always that easy, but how satisfying is this for you and your program? Yeah, it's unbelievable. In fact, I think, Debbie, you were a member of the last NC State team to sweep the regular season and the ACC tournament. Well, on behalf of all the former players, we couldn't be more proud of the effort that you and your team play with and how hard you play with. How about the Miami team in the second half? I mean, it was not an easy uh, run for you. No, again, uh, Katie Myers does an unbelievable job. She was one of the coaches on my ballot for coach of the year. Uh, they make it so difficult for you to run your stuff, for you to just score the ball. Uh, great team, excited to see where they go in the NCAA tournament. I think we got eight, nine, who knows, 10 teams in this league that are worthy of going on. It was an unbelievable. <laughs> And, that, and that's what makes this so impressive. 17 and one in the regular season. 20 and one overall. And I think it's the best the league's ever been with the COVID and the super seniors and transfer portal. Uh, it was a really tough road to get here. I've ridden the coattails of these seniors and super seniors for four or five years. Uh, next year, I may get done in a hurry, but we'll enjoy it for now. Wes, one final thing. You know, you, you bragged and boasted about the balance of this team. Maybe some have sacrificed a little bit individually for the greater good. How much fun is that to coach, and, and what is so good about that moving forward? Well, I just think it helps us if somebody's having an off night, somebody goes down with a tweaked ankle, whatever. Uh, we got people that we know we can bring in. <laughs> We got people we know that we can bring in that are gonna carry the momentum. Uh, it is, it's tough at times because you got so many, they've all been so unselfish about it. We only had one person make all ACC first team or whatever. Uh, but again, I think part of that is they all sacrifice a little bit, but hey, it's worth it, baby. It's worth it, right? Okay, well, we're not done passing out hardware up here because it's time to announce the most valuable player for the 2022 ACC Tournament Championship. And Mr. Jim Phillips is here to join me again. The 2022 ACC Most Valuable Player from NC State, Elisa Kuna. twice as hard, but this was super hard to get here and to finish, so I'm just so proud of this team. Yeah. <laughs> Being the best player on the best team has some of its challenges. How important is it for you to be able to have the kind of balance moving forward to go into the NCAA tournament as the automatic qualifier out of the ACC? Uh, you know, it's huge. Um, <laughs> sorry. <Yeah. laughs> um, <laughs> you know, I have 
have my off nights. I have nights where I don't play well, and this team is so balanced. They can just come step up um, and fill in. So I think it's really just has been a team effort, um, and I'm honored to get this. But really, the whole team's the MVP for getting here. I got to ask you one more time. I know it's emotional for you, but you have helped lead a program to three consecutive ACC tournament championships. That hasn't happened very often in the history of this game in this league. Why is this such an emotional time for you right now? Uh, just because I love this team so much, you know. I came to NC State to elevate this program, um, take it to new heights and build my own legacy, and we've all done that here three times now. Like, that's insane. So, I'm just so proud. <laughs> Congratulations, NC State, your 2022 ACC Tournament Champions.
There you have it. NC State officially punches its ticket to the NCAA tournament. What a great ceremony that was, and so great to hear the emotion from their captain, their leader, Elisa Kunain, as they get it done yet again. What a fun time we've had covering this team, not just this year, last year, the last three years, really. The emotion, Chelsea, that we heard from Elisa Kunain there. I mean, uh, I, I think we both, a couple of us almost needed a tissue there. She's so sincere. Yeah, so sincere, and you can tell that she really, really appreciates and loves this team. I'm just so happy for her. She's grown over her time at NC State, and she's she's done it for her city back back home for her family, and I know she's super excited to it enjoy that with them as well and kelly you just said the impact that she's not just had on this program but also i mean when you think about some of the top women's athletes in nc state history she ranks very high up there this place was packed and these fans absolutely love this team this program and they love them some elisa kunain i think she is going to go down as one of the most beloved athletes in nc state history regardless of sport perhaps the most beloved female athlete in NC State history, but there's no reason to even add that moniker. I think she is just one of the greatest athletes that NC State's ever seen, and what she's done with this team, three straight, and they're not done yet. They have their goals set on a deep run in the NCAA tournament, Coach. You know, and the team loves her. That, that's what I like. I like to see that chemistry with the team, and you can tell they just really want it for each other. They're trying to share it. She's so humble when she's up there, and, and it is emotional, but it was a, a great game, great day to watch. And Coach, there's probably something to be said for her allowing herself to take in that moment, right? As a senior that's playing just down the road from where you grew up, which we heard her say so many people from her family have come back to see her play year in and year out. But you probably want your players to soak it in a little bit, yeah. right? W when it's not over yet. There can be no better feeling than to be surrounded by the people that love you, that have uh, supported you your entire career. They've been there from the very beginning and now they're here to celebrate that moment with you. It is so emotional. And I think it is very telling, Coach. I, of course you notice this because you're a coach, and you've got your eye on it probably better than we do, but her teammates love her. You'll see some teams, perhaps their best players, not exactly the most humble, but that's just not the case with NC State. And she loves them back. She leads them well, as Kayla Jones told us the other day on our broadcast, and she didn't even really want that most valuable player. She wanted to give it back to the team, Jones. Yeah, I think when she said that... Um, she really did it for the other people and she, who she came up here with. And I think that speaks to the type of person that she is and the type of player. That she came to NC State and wanted to elevate that program. And I think she's done just that. They've won three in a row, right? I mean, what more can you ask for? You know, you watch her play. She never gets frustrated. And she gets beat up in there a lot. They were very physical with her today. She seems to handle everything with poise and maturity. And we heard from Coach Wes Moore as well up on the podium and what this team meant to him. And he said, I've been riding their coattails the whole way, Kelly. You got to talk to him after the game. What do you think this means to, to Wes Moore? It means so much to Wes Moore. There's no doubt about it. He's a guy, too, that at times he will get emotional. He, he wears his feelings on his sleeve a little bit, and you know how much this program and these players mean to him. I asked him about Kayla Jones, who you see right there, Kai Crutchfield, and Reina Perez, the fifth year seniors who chose to come back because of the COVID year because they wanted to do this again and they wanted to get further in the NCAA tournament. And he said that those three just mean the world to him and the other senior in Elisa Kunain as well. There's no better feeling than right now when the game's about a minute left, you know you're gonna win, the crowd starts to get excited and just that feeling of like, we did it. You know, it's a little bit of relief at first when you're the number one seed. And then it's like, finally we can celebrate. There is no next game right now. We don't know who we're playing next. We know we're a number one seed. So we can actually relax and enjoy the moment. Yeah, I was looking on the sideline, looking for him to crack a smile. It didn't happen until like the 52nd mark. I was like, coach, yeah, I think you got it here. I think you got it here at 14. So it was good for him to enjoy that on the sideline. And even when the buzzer sounded, he's still standing there like looking like we might have some more time at it on the clock. Like you can take this moment in and enjoy it. So super happy for him as well. Well, in respect to Miami, because guess what? He saw them come back and what they did in that fourth quarter against Louisville and then the way they were able to battle it out against Notre Dame to get themselves here. And we will definitely touch on Miami and the great accomplishments that they had all season long as we see Westmore Wake making his way up here right now. Excited to hear what he has to say. Chelsea, what's it like to play for a coach like that that you just know believes in you so much? 
it means everything. When you are going on the court, you make a mistake, you look at him, and you know he has confidence in what you can do. And that's what it's all about. I think that's why people have chosen to go to NC State. His culture, how he builds up his players, want the best for his players. And that's why you pick certain certain schools, right, Coach? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's all about the culture. I mean, it really is. And uh, and he is such a great coach, too. I mean, the X's and O's, you know you're going to learn something when you play for him because they want to make it to the next level. They want to know how they get better and how they can achieve their potential, and he's doing it. It's their third straight ACC title. They are just the fifth different program in the ACC. Kelly to three P. It's not easy to do, but we just saw it be done by these Wolfpack. It's very hard to do. Unless you ask Muffin McGraw, she might tell you. That's, why, that's why I came to you. That's wasn't that hard. You. But you know, to the to the average human, well, it is incredibly difficult to three P. When everyone, you've got a target on your back all season, and you've got to deal with that and the expectation. Sometimes it's easier being the underdog. If you're Miami, you had absolutely nothing to lose today, and they played their hearts out as, as and did as what they could, but. Sometimes it's hard to deal with those expectations. Coach, you've been here. You've <laughs> you done <agree>? it before. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm going to tell you, it's, it's such a great feeling because you can relax, right? You can yeah, enjoy the moment. for a few days, yeah, yes. Exactly. <laughs> we, I love that we have two weeks before we play yes. in the NCAAs. This is the best time of the year for a coach. <laughs> You're sure. hearing him. You haven't seen him yet, but <laughs> Coach Westmore is with us on set now. And, Coach, man, congratulations. What a season. What yeah. a performance. Again, you're standing there and taking it all in and, yeah. and hearing Elisa Kunain yeah. talk the way she is in the emotion. Yeah. What's it like for you? Yeah, you know, I'm just so proud of those kids. Uh, some of them have been here five years, some four. And, uh, you know, I've ridden their coattails, you know. <laughs> I mean, when they leave uh, here in a few months, I'm going to get dumb in a hurry. But, uh, <laughs> you know, it's been uh, – and, and as Muffin and y'all were talking about, it is tough when you're picked to win it in the regular season. Then you come in here kind of expected to win it. And uh, it's been it's been tough. And we went through a lull maybe end of July – I mean, end of January, early February. And I thought, are they just ready to move on? <laughs> and uh, then all of a sudden, practices started being fun again, and we got some momentum. And – uh, like I said, they're unbelievable. These players have no idea the pressure on us. <laughs> <laughs> they, yeah, just, they, they would just come out and play well every game. It'd be it's, so much it's easier. A whole, it, well, it's funny. We were watching the games last night back at the hotel, and they were, like, yelling at, why, why are you doing that? What are you doing? I said, well, now you see how I feel over there, okay? I mean, come on. You guys are right. It's so easy being a player. I mean, it's just yeah. so oh, easy. Yeah. So much yeah. fun. Out there gotta, putting your body on the line. got to make every shot. It's like, why? You didn't make a pull up. But anyway, um, I want us to take a step back going into this game. What were the conversations building up to this point? You said that there's always that pressure of, okay, you've done this before. What has been, what's been going through your mind coming into this championship game? Well, Miami, you know, first of all, Katie Myers does an unbelievable job. She was one of the coaches that I voted for in the coach of the year voting. Um, she's, you know, always, they always make it tough for you to score. I mean, we, usually we go down to Miami, it's like 51 to 50 or something. Mm -hmm. It's going to be, you know, a dog fight. And we do the same thing today. Uh, what, you know, they've beaten two really good teams, three teams here the last few days. Uh, we knew it was going to be our, our players respect Miami. They know how good they are. Coach, when you took over, this league was run by kind of this lady over yeah. here. Um, <laughs> Louisville, some of those programs, but you guys have become the premier program in this league. What well, did it take, Coach, to do that? Well, it takes great kids, and uh, you know, I heard Muffet talking one night on the set, talking about how we may not get the top, you know, McDonald's All-American, whatever, uh, but we get kids that are really great character kids. They work hard, uh, and they play unselfishly, and uh, it's just been fun. Now, like I said, we're getting ready to lose four starters <laughs> that have been here, you know, and made a big impact. Three ACC tournament titles, a regular season, uh, that's a legacy, and uh, like I said, we the reason they came back though is for the next tournament, and again, we'll have uh, you know have a lot of pressure there too. But uh, they've they've made it fun. They made the journey great, and I uh, couldn't be prouder of them. And like I said, I you know it's all about them. I understand that you don't win the Kentucky Derby with a mule. We got <laughs> thoroughbreds, okay? Well, and, you made them better. Well, they got better when they came. Well, they work they work at it, and uh, again. It's, it's, I want to look forward to coming to work every day. You know, I want to be surrounded by kids that are great people and that are fun. You know, I'm tough on the sideline, but when we're 
in the Bahamas or wherever. <laughs> I'm in the water park with them. I'm jumping <laughs> off that cliff or whatever. I want to have fun, and uh, they're that kind of kids. That's why they love you. Kels, I have a new favorite Westmore Southern saying. You don't win the Kentucky Derby with a mule. Boom. Right. There I love it. It's perfect. It. Coach, congratulations. I would ask you if number one, number two, or number three was your favorite, but hey, how could you pick? Because they are all so sweet, they and are. you guys are not they done are. yet. Congratulations. Yeah. And if y'all need me to explain the, the gravy story, I will. <laughs> <laughs> what you got? You want to give it to us quick? <laughs> uh, we, it's baby. Yeah. It's baby. I know. Kelsey did not get okay. that. I Kelsey know, did not I get know that. she I'm did it. Okay. I'm sorry, I didn't get it. After an sorry, ugly I win. Didn't. That may be an ugly baby, but it's, but it's our, our baby. baby. <laughs> well, you got three babies to put in your trophy case now, Coach. Congratulations. Your team down there cutting down the net. Enjoy the rest of the celebration. Thanks. Oh, Thanks. I'm going to have some gravy. There you go. <laughs> you should, because it is all gravy, baby. You guys got another one. Elisa Kunane, the MVP, so well deserved. We will have more coverage live from Greensboro on the other side of this break. Welcome back into Nothing But Net, presented by TIAA, dedicated to a quality in retirement. The NC State Wolfpack are your ACC tournament champs yet again. Third straight time they come in and get the win. Let's show you how it all went down. Taking on the seventh seed from Miami, Katie Meyer squad. Man, they pulled off some impressive things. Could they do it again? Looking for their first ever title. Seven minutes in the second quarter, NC State up two. Destiny Harden just fighting her way to the basket, Cal. They hung around early. That first half, they were very much in it, and I thought they came out strong, attacked NC State in the early part of the first half. A minute later, Elisa Kunane in the paint, shelf. Yeah, this is a workhorse. She really, really finds her way to the basket, whether she's doing up and unders, shooting over the top. Really good to have her on the squad. Time ticking down in the half. Of course, you want the ball in Reina Perez's hand because she knocks down the buzzer beater at the three. NC State ends the half on a 10-0 run. And then more from Kunane, coach. Yeah, that was it. I love to see the pick and roll. And then they finally got inside, and she really got going a little bit. It was a little scary when she turned her ankle, but uh, was able to come back in the game. Yeah, she goes down tough, has to go in the locker room for a little while, but was able to come back in the game and was all smiles later. We'll show you that in just a second. Nine seconds in the third. Diamond Johnson, step back three. NC State up 18, and they were able to roll from there. The Wolfpack win it. Final score, 60 to 47. They are the ACC tournament champs yet again. Now this game was close early. Miami, they came to play. We wondered if fatigue would play into this. And Chelsea, you touched on it earlier. It felt like Wes Moore up until the very last second ticked off the clock. Didn't matter if they were up double digits. He didn't trust that lead. He'd seen what Miami had done before, but ultimately they were able to get the he job put his, done. He put his starters back in. He's like, hold on, hold on. They went on a little bit too much of a run. Here comes Crutchfield. Here comes Kunane. Let me stop the bleeding before, before we go into overtime here, but I was glad to see him smiling at the end. It, it came a little bit later than I thought it was going to happen, but super happy for him, and I know he's excited for those seniors and the seniors that came back to do this again. When do you relax, Coach? Yeah, about that time. 50 seconds. <laughs> 50 seconds. They were up 14 with like a minute and a half to go. But, Chels, he wasn't going to risk it. And I was in the Miami huddle during that. And yeah. Katie Meyer, you know, trying to project confidence to her team. She looked at them after that timeout about five minutes to go. And she said, she smiled and she goes, we've done this before. Yeah. So she was trying to communicate to her team, look, we have done this before. Let's not count ourselves out. Now, some of that is coaching. You want to show your team you believe in them. Yeah. But Westmore had that in his mind, that they had done that before. Yeah, you know, it's different when you're looking from up here. You're going like, take your starters out. The game's <laughs> over. But when you're on the bench, you're like, I don't know. Like, uh, you know, you want to be sure. And you certainly don't want to blow a lead like that with a minute left in the game. But, you know, aside from that 10-0 run at the end of the mm -hmm. second quarter, Miami was right with them mm -hmm. the whole game. That run was huge. The Reina Perez bucket and Miami, they had two fouls on all three of their post players. They went to that reserve post player. I'm blanking on her name right now, but she didn't make, make the layup. Then Reina comes down, hits the three. That was a huge, huge turn of events. And it was shocking to me, Kels, that Miami, I'm not shocking because, look, they're exhausted, but they couldn't do much when Kunane was out. That's when they had to make their run yeah. when Kunane was out. 
Yeah, they missed some open shots, I think, and that were yeah. knocked, they were knocking down in the first half. Williams hit a three. Kelsey Marshall hit some threes. But, I mean, the fight in Kelsey Marshall, she wasn't going yeah. down. <laughs> she was going down swinging if yeah. she was going to lose that basketball game. So, super happy in the way Miami played. This outing that they had in this ACC tournament is going to push them along in the NCAA tournament. They'll win, hopefully, a game or two and be able to still compete at that high level. Yeah. There are moral victories, mm -hmm. and this was one of them. I, I used to hate when people say, like, well, you know, it's a moral victory. But, but for this team, when you're picked seventh mm -hmm. and yeah. you come in and you finish in the championship game, that, that's huge for your confidence. She's got to feel really good about this. Coach, you're getting soft in retirement. I, <laughs> I didn't think there were moral <laughs> victories been for Muffin up McGraw. here with us for too long. We're starting to rub off on her. There um, were no moral victories up until today. But Understood. now there yes. are some now there are. moral <laughs> victories. One of the big takeaways, too, big picture-wise, guys, is, is not just the way that Miami battled to get into this game, but the fact that they were the seventh seed. They were able to compete with NZ State the whole time because this league coach is so strong. Can you think of a time when the, when the league has been this complete and this strong, I mean, in recent memory? Yeah, I mean, every game was a battle, especially on the other team's home court. Miami, in particular, was so good at home. Every team had a really good record at home, so you know going in, every game was going to be a real fight. And when you can look and see what happens with all these upsets in the tournament, we are a team that deserves to have eight, nine, ten teams in the NCAA tournament. Coach, I agree. And to me, it's, it's the middle or the, the kind of the teams that are in the middle upper portion of the league. You've got NC State and Louisville. Those are one seats. The difference between this year and last year, Virginia Tech and UNC were both eight nines last right. year. This year, there's an argument they could both be top four. Yeah. So they've taken that step. Georgia Tech is still very good. And then Miami, BC, FSU, they all are better than last year. So this league, especially that middle portion, there's never an easy game, Charles. Yeah, when we were in the in the ACC, it was a, it was really top heavy, mm -hmm. and you would have those five teams like, okay, this is right. who you're gonna see in the semifinals, who you're gonna see in the finals. But look, we have Miami in the finals again, NC State, and that's what you like to see. You like the growth of the league, and people are going to want to come here from high school and compete in this league because you're going to play the best every single night. Well, and we know how good this league is, how good NC State is, but I think that's definitely the difference. We've seen the ACC get multiple teams in, get eight teams in, but seeing that potentially we could have not just these two number one seeds, but also multiple teams hosting the first two rounds with top four seeds. It's going to be really interesting to see how it all plays out and how will it play out in the next part of the postseason for Miami. We will hear from their head coach, Katie Meyer, in just a little while, but right now all smiles for the Wolfpack here in Greensboro. The celebration continues here in Greensboro Coliseum as NC State wins yet another championship here at the ACC tournament. Back to back to back for them. But what about the fight that Miami put up to get here? They no, weren't someone that many people thought would be here at this point, but hey, they battled it out. And now at this point already have 14 NCAA tournament appearances and will certainly be making their 15th appearance. We'll see where they fall. Eight, nine seed right now projected to be a nine seed. According to Charlie Green, let's go out to the podium. Their head coach, Katie Meyer, after the loss. Yeah, I mean, I don't know how you can defend that team any better than we did. I, I just don't know. We held them to 60. Um, if you told me we were going to have more points in the paint against them and that they were only going to hit five threes um, and that we were also going to out-rebound them, um, I would think that we were out on the court right now with confetti on our heads. I just don't know that you can ask more from a team and be gutsy or whatever than we were. Um, they had a couple of amazing runs fueled by the crowd, fueled by emotion, and frankly, um, our emotional fuel tank was, was a little empty um, on the fourth day. I just saw behavior in my team, a little bit of, you know, like staring at the ref and asking for a foul. We haven't, done, we haven't acted like that all year. And, and they, some of those runs were fueled by our immaturity, a little bit of an emotional, um, yeah. I mean, if you're ever going to have an empty fuel tank, I guess it is on the fourth day after playing um, three amazing teams to get here and then playing the best team in the conference on the last day and asking your kids to defend their brains out. Um, at some point, emotionally, on the offensive end, we got really uh, empty. There's no other way to say it. Um, and the only one who kind of kept us in it was Kelsey, Kelsey, and I thought she played great. 
um, and really was calling, um, demanding, demanding calls. And, and you know, when Kelsey's at her best, um, she's coaching with me, and I thought she did a great job there. But um, they hit some really big, some big shots on plays, and 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 they really did. I mean, the step backs and Perez and Diamond and all that. And then we had those moments too. in, in that third quarter, um, honestly, we. The run in the end of the, the half, uh, we were fine. We could have withstood it. But the third quarter run um, really broke us. And I thought we had some in – the, in, the, in the end of the second half, we had answer shots. I mean, they got a big shot. I, I, I liked to play. I liked to call. I liked it. We were fine. They, the ball went in and out. We got Maver three. We got Kelsey three. We got Kelsey a pull up. We were fine. The third quarter run was rough on us. That kind of that kind of broke us. And then, of course, we never went away. Um, but NC State is so phenomenal. Um, I'm glad um, Elise is okay. Uh, I, I'm really glad she's okay because they represent our conference so well. Wes does an amazing job. It is so hard to score against them. And I think people are saying that same thing about Miami. But they're a championship team all the way. And, and um, you know, I hope they're not in our bracket. <laughs> they're really good. Okay. Congratulations to them and the Classy program, 100%. What a great conference. Big picture. Ten games ago, you guys were sitting at 12 and 10. Since then, you've won eight, eight of the Thank last you. ten. I need that. <laughs> I need that reminder right now. But you've coached for such a long time. What is so special about this group and all things considered? I know you didn't get the result you wanted today, but how proud are you of this group to, to rip off this many wins and do it the way they've done? Yeah, uh, I mean, you're going to – and my emotional fuel tank's a little empty too now, but I love them. I, I've loved them from the beginning. I loved them when we were getting derailed at Carolina. Um, and and I just want to be there for them. Um, and I think that's where we have a certain resilience because, and I said it yesterday, but the, the roots are deep here. You know, when we're yelling at each other on the court, that we're not losing our composure. That is, we are family, and that's how family talks to each other. So when we're saying box out and screaming at each other and all that, that's not when we lose our composure at all. That's, that's you see other teams that make mistake and turn their back, and we make mistake, we go right at each other, and I think that has a lot to do with how vulnerable we've been, how open we've been with each other, and how we're not scared of, of, a, of a hard truth because um, this is not gonna happen to us again, right? And I told the team in the locker room, um, you know, we're gonna be in a situation like this again, and we're gonna be playing on a, someone's kind of home court. <laughs> Right, it's going to be loud. They're going to be the higher ranked team. Um, that's how the NCAA tournament is set up. If you want, if we have bigger dreams of advancing, you know, we're not a host seed, so um, we'll be playing on someone's court. And so, if as long as we have emotional fuel to withstand runs um, in the next scenario, this team we just grew deeper roots today. That's what happened. It, we got deeper. We got stronger. And um, but what a run! I mean, what a run! You know, I'm gonna. I, I haven't had time to think about it, but I will. I mean, I will go through Twitter. I will watch those games. I won't watch the edited version. I'll hear the excitement and the love and, the, and, and everything because we deserve it. We deserved it. That was just a remarkable performance by an unbelievably gritty team. But I'm telling you, it's because we are 100% real with each other. Gosh, you gotta love Katie Meyer, and they are not done yet. But today's day, well, it was NC State. The Wolfpack get their seventh ACC tournament title. That's the fourth most in ACC tournament history. Their third in a row, and we are joined now by someone who has been a part of those and knows what it's like not to just win back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back championships, but now to win back-to-back -to -back tournament MVPs, the woman of the hour, Elisa Kunane. Congratulations on a phenomenal performance once again. And Elisa, we've seen the emotion from you in all of these interviews and standing up on the stage and getting to take it in. Now that you've had a second to breathe, I mean, what does it mean to you to be here yet again? Uh, I mean, it just means so much. Go through this whole season, you know, you look for, we want to win regular season, then we want to win ACC tournament. So to come out here and actually be able to execute that um, against a great Miami team who was hot coming in and then do it back to back to back, uh, it's just so amazing for this team. You've, you've experienced the ACC for four years. What have you learned from yourself from coming in and then now your senior season? Uh, I think just being able to like slow down and read the other team more. Um, you know, like if I know they're playing more finesse or so, like maybe I need to have um, a stronger game, like go more physical. If they're going to be physical, play more finesse. So I think just like 
learning the scout and knowing what the other team is going to do and then being able to execute on my end. Lisa, I noticed today, I know you, you had the ankle injury, you came back because you weren't going to be <laughs> kept out of the game. I, I, I could tell. But on your shoe, you had left foot, right foot, breathe written on there. I believe that goes back to Pat Summit. We know that Wes Moore coached with Pat Summit. So what does that mean to you? And it's on your shoe. Uh, well, they're actually Candace Parker. So okay. it's just they yeah. were written on the shoe when we got them. Um, but I think it's pretty cool to like look down in the middle of the game and just be like, okay, like no matter what's happening, breathe. You're in the game uh, and just focus on what you're going to do next. Well, Candace probably got it from Pet Summit, right? Probably. Yeah. <laughs> but Chelsea's over here saying, give Candace credit. <laughs> <laughs> the shoes, the shoes, the shoes. <laughs> What's it like when you're watching the tournament, Louisville goes down, and you probably in the back of your mind were thinking that's who we will see in the final if things go well, and then Notre Dame gets beat. You were really worried about that Notre Dame game, I'm sure. <laughs> and then, uh, you know, and now you end up with Miami, like the scouting changes, but did anything change for you guys? Not really. You know, we had an open mind through the whole tournament, um, even going back to our game against either Virginia Tech or Carolina. Um, you know, we didn't really say, oh, we want to play this team over this team. We said, either way, we're going to match up how we're going to match up. Uh, I think Coach is probably more stressed about preparing yeah. the scouts. Uh, but we <laughs> were just chilling, waiting for him to get ready. Uh, and then we were going to go execute against whoever it was. Elisa, we talked a lot about the crowd here. And I know you guys enjoy playing here in front of all these fans. But even bigger than that is, is the fans that you bring and your family. And what does this mean to you to have all of them here and for them to get to see you on this big stage? Uh, it's just so special to me. You know, that's one reason why I love basketball, because it brings all my family together. You know, I had cousins from Pennsylvania drive down this morning uh, to for come to the game, and just people from all over Greensboro, all over the state, um, drive up and come to the game. So it's just so much bigger than basketball. You know, that's family, and that's love, and I just really appreciate all their support. We've talked to, to um, throughout the show about the story of your father and how close you guys are. Did you get to see him yet? What did he say and your mom? Uh, I haven't seen him yet. Um, I saw my mom. I gave her my MVP trophy. She started crying. Um, <laughs> oh, no. But no, I haven't seen my dad yet. Um, he's up there, so I waved at him, uh, made him, let him know that I saw him, but I'll see him outside. I'm sure he's watching hugs. right now. Yeah. No doubt. And we're keeping her from her dad. Way to go, guys. Yeah. Way to go. Everyone, <laughs> great work. But we just had your coach on, and he's talking about the NCAA tournament. And I, I, I know we want to live in the moment. We're talking about the A tournament there's you with your mom but you guys have bigger goals as well so you're going to take some time to relax what is the mindset of this team heading into the NCAA tournament uh, just we have a lot more fight to go you know it was a fight to get here to win this championship but every single game is going to be a fight from here on out um, and no game is guaranteed we probably have one game guaranteed and that's the first game so we just really got to lock in and know we've accomplished this but this isn't all we want to accomplish this season so this is your third one. Does it, how does it compare to the other two <laughs> that you already have? Uh, this one's just so emotional. Like I've just been crying every time people ask yeah. me questions. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I just think it's so special. Like it was almost like a second senior night. You know, you come out here. This is the last time you play in Greensboro. Last time playing for an ACC championship. And there's nothing like it. Um, we already talked about the home crowd type of thing. You know, there's just nothing like it. And do it three times. Like I'm still like shook. Like that's just amazing <laughs> for us. <laughs> Elisa, is there anything you learned from last year that as you get ready for this postseason now that you really want to keep in the forefront of your mind? I think just really focusing game by game and giving our all to each game. You know, you can't think like, oh, we're going to play another game so we can kind of save our energy. Um, I think just giving it all to each game and being prepared for every game and not like letting one slip us by. We have so enjoyed having you on set with us, covering you this year and looking forward to what else you do. Your tournament MVP yet again, Alisa <laughs> Kunain. Congratulations. Thank you, guys. All right, we've got more to cover here in Greensboro because we are not done yet. The autographs, hey, you got to get them. They're hot right now. The tickets are punched. We will see what lies ahead for the Wolfpack. More tournament talk after this. Final seconds of the quarter. Johnson. Drake's going to have to write a new song because they went back to back to back and will they go back to back again? Chelsea, I appreciate how much you enjoyed that one. Thank you. I've been holding on to it for a little while as you take a look at Charlie Cruz's bracketology. NC State Louisville, number one seeds, Notre Dame, Virginia Tech, and North Carolina right now. He is sitting at a five seed, Georgia Tech, a seven seed, Miami, and Florida State in the mix as well. What will happen with Boston College and Duke? And how did the ACC tournament factor into all of these decisions? Let's get the very latest from Charlie Cream. Charlie?
Well, thanks, Kelsey. After this championship game in the ACC, status quo for NC State in Miami. The Wolfpack, a clear number one seed. They've been that way all season long, and they're going to remain that on Selection Sunday. I have Miami as a nine seed, and they don't drop after this loss. No shame in losing to a number one seed, and the Hurricanes, I think, will be on that nine line come Selection Sunday. The big question in the ACC is, can any teams besides NC State and Louisville host games in the first and second round? And I think the answer to that right now is no. Notre Dame, North, North Carolina, Virginia Tech had opportunities to maybe move into that top 16, but since they weren't there for the last NCAA selection committee reveal, and then they did not advance far enough in the ACC tournament to kind of move past teams that frankly gave them opportunities to do so. Oklahoma and Arizona losing meant that if Notre Dame could have gotten to this final today, I think the Irish would have been in the top 16, but that door kind of closed with their loss in the semifinals to Miami. So I think it's going to be two ACC teams hosting first and second round games, but eight teams, maybe nine even, in the NCAA tournament as a whole. ACC Network going on the road again, taking the men's nothing but net crew to Brooklyn as the ACC men's tournament starts on Tuesday. And we will have the action for you all day long right here on ACC Network. And as always, streaming on the ESPN app. Going to be a phenomenal tournament, especially after the way the final day of the men's season ended yesterday. That was madness and Cameron Indoor. Nothing but smiles here for Wes Moore as he gets another championship. Welcome back into Nothing But Net presented by TIAA dedicated to equality in retirement. What a great ACC tournament we've had. Oh look, I love you Muffet, coach. How does that make you feel? Oh, that's so sweet to remember the old days <laughs> when we were dominating the conference. <laughs> Nice of Coach to plant a fan in the stands. Coach That's my sister. Comes, coach, <laughs> coach always comes in with the one-line zingers and kind of catches me off guard a little bit because you never know what you're going to say, and that is why I love it. Welcome back out to Greensboro Coliseum for the final time, and what a week that we have had here, kind of soaking in the moment. Want to get to you now, though. The ACC All-Tournament team, because we did just get that list in. Your five first-team players, Elisa Kunane, Jada Boyd, Destiny Harden, Kelsey Marshall, and Georgia Amor. Coach, your thoughts? Exactly as I picked them. I, I thought those five really played well. I knew it was going to be top heavy with the teams that were playing the longest, uh, but those five just really excelled this week. Second team, we've got Delisha Washington, Jakia Brown Turner, Olivia Miles, Kiana Trailer, and Asia Shepherd. Kelly, your thoughts? Virginia Tech, look, they had a great run here as well, and they had to do so much without Kitley. So three Hokies on this team. And I'm glad Jakia Brown Turner got on there because sometimes. We forget about NC State's depth pieces when it comes to these individual awards, but all of them are so good. So getting Jakia Brown Turner on there, maybe Raina Perez. Where's the point guard? Hmm. Uh, that's thank you, Coach. Yes, preaching to the choir here. <laughs> Raina Perez really controlled that championship game. Like if she's not on the court, I don't know on some of those runs that Miami was able to go on. So. I don't know who I take off, but I know Raina Perez needs a little asterisk or Absolutely. something underneath. Yeah, it's all it's all about the point guard. And she had some huge shots. She got the ball to the right people. She did everything she needed. Theme to do. of the weekend. It's all about the point guard. It's but the center won the most outstanding player. Because the point guard got her the ball. <laughs> We've been so busy no. here all week, guys. Um, and now we have a little time to sit back and wait and see what happens and get ready for selection Sunday on the 13th. From a coach's perspective, what's the next week like? You know what? It's, it's really hard to practice. I generally gave my team off. They went to Florida. They went home. Uh, they, they got a break. A mental break is so important at this time of the year because you've been working so hard. I gave them at least four or five days off, sometimes five or six days off. I regretted it about the day three, but I always did it because they came back really fresh. You don't know who you're going to play. You're trying to put new things in. You want some new wrinkles. You don't want anybody able to see some of the stuff that you've been doing all year. So we're going to add some new stuff. Well, it's been a long season. To get that break and to regroup mentally, I think, is very important as well. And, Coach, to your point, you don't know yet. You, you have no idea, and that's what we love about Selection Sunday is it's all unveiled at once, Chels. Yeah, Coach gave him five to six days Yeah, that's off. a lot. <laughs> that's what happens when you win four straight ACC titles. You can say, okay, well, you guys I know, just I'm like writing this you down. Already, Let me, you already yeah. know what How to many do. days? You already day, know what to do. Day, <laughs> hey, we were on spring break, by the way. They weren't missing class. So. Oh, well, we put that that's what we were all worried about. <laughs>
<laughs> Tell us how about for you from the player's perspective, especially, okay, it, let's look at it from two things. NC State, what are they thinking this next week? Because they're riding high right now. And then everybody else who feels like, man, we were one away, or as Katie Meyer says, that was the almost. This is their almost. What are you thinking? You definitely want to enjoy this moment. It's not easy to hold up that trophy, to be able to do this on this stage, especially right now in the ACC. It's so powerful, and every team is good. You have a seven seed in Miami coming in, into into the tournament. They're at the championship game. This this ACC is so good. And so I'm going back, and I'm celebrating with my family, having a break, maybe five or six days, maybe seven. <laughs> I don't know if Coach will do that now. <laughs> but I'm excited. I'm holding on to this. But my eye is on, on that next round. So I'm in the gym you know, working on some things, not getting too far. Because if you're in the middle of season and you take four days off, yeah. when I come back, I'm just like. <sighs> Huffing and puffing. I'm just like, how, did, how do we win this ACC <laughs> tournament? And now you got coaches like Coach McGraw is like on the line. And I'm just like, <laughs> yep, you yep. the one that gave us five days off. <laughs> no doubt. Ke Kelly and I have been here in Greensboro before. Your first time, Coach, sitting on this desk with us and getting to see it from this perspective. Yours as well, Chels. What was your biggest the takeaway? The atmosphere was phenomenal. I, I just felt like I was in tournament atmosphere every single minute. The crowds were terrific and a first-class job done by the ACC. Yeah, the, the, it was so loud in here. This championship game, it was filled with red. I was like, are we in Greensboro? Are we in Raleigh? <laughs> like, we're, it felt like a home game for them, but the excitement being able to see it live. It's just so different than watching on TV. We certainly appreciate everybody who has joined us throughout the season. Uh, Kelly, I want to give you a final word as well because it's been so much fun to share the dust with you guys. We're not done yet. We'll be back with you on Selection Sunday and we're going to be hanging out with you hopefully all the way through the Final Four. I'm looking at you ACC yeah. teams to get us there. <laughs> Kelly, I mean, just your thoughts on the season that we've well, seen. Well, shout out to NC State for doing what they did. It's very hard to win when you have those expectations. I also want to give a shout out to Miami. I think mm -hmm. still one of the most magical runs that we've seen in the ACC Women's Tournament. They fought hard and they were a lot of fun to watch. We have loved all of the moments that we've had throughout the year and especially here in Greensboro, North Carolina. Again, it all leads now to the Final Four. Minneapolis, who will be there? Hopefully, maybe we get to see one, two, a couple ACC teams in the mix. For Chelsea Gray, Kelly Graham, like the Hall of Famer, Muffin McGraw, everybody behind the scenes who has kicked butt for us all week. We appreciate it and we will see you on Selection Sunday. All eyes are on Greensboro as we kick off Mark Madden. Washington slicing through the lane. Such good patience. Body control. She's got it all. Ooh, Delisha Wu is the right word, girl. Amor. Maybe not. Maybe Amor takes it herself. It rolls around and out. Tar Heels go to Aspie. Looking for the three. This has got to be one of the better games in ACC women's basketball history. Marshall inbounds it. She gets it to Harden. That's for the win. It's over! It is over! 27 points! Harden wins it! What just happened? <laughs> I really don't know. An upset of the Fighting Irish of Notre Dame, and the Canes will play for the ACC championship for the first time in school history. One heavy favorite, one big underdog as State goes for the three-peat. Johnson, step back, three. Go!